I should be live. I hope it's working. Hello, everyone from everywhere who happened to check in somehow. <laughs> Hello. If you can hear me and see me, fine. Let me know. So that um, if there's a problem, I can just. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good midnight. Some 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 places. <laughs> I know. I usually don't do a Tuesday Tuesday live stream. So this is a very unusual live stream. Okay. And it's way earlier than 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 last two months of this year. I've been doing them at the end of the month, but now I'm pulling it to the middle so that next month I can also do it in the middle. Hello! See how many familiar names I can... Oh, so many familiar names. Pretty much everyone's name is familiar here. Hi. <laughs> First time here. Oh, love fallacy. Well... Is that his first time who? Oh, clearly you're not talking about me. Anyway, so much drama. Uh -huh. Hi, hi, hello. How are you doing, everyone? March. Today is 3.15, right? So yesterday was White Valentine. Although that does not matter, really. <laughs> 3, 3.15 in China is 消费者权益, is consumer's right day, which is uh, traditionally exposing bad business and wrongdoings of you know all, all types of uh, businesses day <laughs> so that that's 315 for for China hi from India I'm from UK hi hi Brazil hello well my stream has numbers so you know this is the 30 the 33. 331, which is cool. Good number. 33, master number, hey. The highest ma master number in life numbers, I think. Because people don't count 44, usually. I don't know why, but 11, 12, 11, 22, 33. So 33 is an important number. Three plus three equals six, which six represents beauty. <laughs> oh yeah, through 14 is Pi Day, sure, sure. When I was little, I actually spent some time trying to remember, like after the, uh, you know, decimal, how many I can, I can remember of Pi. My highest record was 500 digits. And then that's about it. But I can only recite it in Chinese because it's faster. It, and, and my brain remember the sound of the numbers instead of the numbers themselves. So if I do it in English, I, I can't, but I can do it in Chinese right now, probably to at least 50. Anyone curious about that? I can do it now. 3.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.
my mom is crazy in 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 terms of like science. She's really good. Um, when she was in university, she gets full score at exams of biochem. Anybody doing biochem, you know how difficult it is, right? And 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 she, and she gets all correct answers for for exams. Biochem. <laughs> I'm like, you are, you didn't give me that gene, hey? You totally just didn't give me that. We definitely need to talk about dramas today, but hey, let's just talk about some random stuff first. I, I really have very high respect for people who can do very, very well at math, chemistry, physics, all that type of stuff. Because for me, there's things of that just naturally I can't compute. I hate it um, when we have to learn in middle school in China uh, physics. I particularly hated li xue and dian xue, so the things to do with force, right? Of of like all, all those questions of like on a surface, you put a cart on it that has a wheel and somebody pulls it and you have to analyze like where all the forces come and go and like how it moves. I hated that. I never understood how that works. And that's one type of question I cannot figure. The other is, is electricity. So you have like a huge, the electricity diagram and you have to figure out where you you know like how you link it together and it works for whatever purpose my greatest nightmare of physics was i still remember it it's over how many years two decades but i still remember one of my worst nightmare i've ever had is i got called in class and had to stand in front of the blackboard and then draw this diagram of electricity of all the switches there are 300 switches on that diagram and I had to answer the question in front of the whole class. And that's one of my worst nightmares of school years. I still remember that dream up to today. And I think, and I think about it, I was like, ah! <laughs> so, me, random information on that. We will talk about drama and entertainment. Yeah, I promise you. Yeah, just before, hey, yesterday, I was like, yeah, uh, we're just gonna talk about dramas today, but I woke up, well, before I woke up, last night there was a snow plowing truck outside, so it woke me up middle of the night, three, four o'clock, something like that, and I was like, ah, okay, gotta pee, <laughs> and, and, and th since I'm already awake, I peeked at my phone and my friend sent me a text and saying, entertainment, business, earthquake again. I'm like, what the fuck happened? <laughs> and then turn on Weibo and you see number one trending, Deng Lun, tax. It's been quiet for half a year since the storm of August, at the end of August. Well, well, well. <laughs> Can't wait, I can't even wait uh, for longer. It just happens again. Thank you. Somebody typed in Chinese. Hiya! <laughs> Bring Uncle Roger here and let's hiya together, hey. Is he fully cancelled? I mean, it only just happened, so we have to wait and see, but I don't see him coming back anytime soon because um, pretty much every other people who got into those big tax problems has, haven't come back yet. So, so like, you know, it can't, it can't just immediately happen. Also, um, entertainment and business is going to be made as a case for this type of thing and there are gonna be more people getting investigated and see if they have tax problems so until this whole thing sort of takes its course yeah he may get cancelled forever but to make him as an example of not doing it in this business and you know since you earn that much money you have to take on the responsibilities of things um so could be that he doesn't come back. Um, 
I just feel really bad for the drama a Night Wanderer because I really want to see that drama. It looks great. The camera work is absolutely breathtaking. The concept is beautiful. Uh, Nini and Deng Lun. Oh, I can't wait. But now, that drama 99.99% is not gonna air unless they refilm every shot that has him in it. So, or they replace it with AI, like they literally deep fake another actor's face onto him. Like that's the only way I could see that drama coming out. Uh, given by the time they finished doing that, the, the post-production, uh, Nini hasn't had any trouble. She, her face can still be kept in the drama. If she has any trouble, it's like Ba Qing Zhuan of, of uh, Fan Bingbing and, 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 and uh, what's the actor's name? I can't remember. You know, the, the, the Qin Dynasty drama with Fan Bingbing. Because both of them had problems, the female lead and the male lead. Therefore, that drama is like probably toasted completely. They won't have enough money to, to deep fake the whole thing. <sighs> so. I want Night Wanderer. It's, it's just... Like, like, with the amount of money he evaded, which is added together about 60 million. Yeah, 60 million RMB, and then he has to pay the fine. So adding together is over 100 million Chinese RMB. Uh, and and it's, it's 1.06 um, in Chinese E, which is 100 million. So it's 106 million, basically 106 million RMB in total. Um, for most of the people, in China, through, like if, even if they work really hard their entire lifetime, they're not gonna be able to even earn six million. So the one hundred and six, right? The, the the last digit is is like beyond most of people's re uh, reach in China. And think about that. Like that's all the money he has to pay, and that's just like the last digit of it. Like, like the, the the gap and and the money wise, it's how how incredibly unimaginably rich and overpaid actors are in chi China. And and when you have that much money, you know, you still don't want to pay the tax. Well, in a way, if your career gets cancelled for that, it's still not the worst that can come to you. You don't get imprisonment. Um, you don't get. If you're in the U.S. and you do that to IRS. They're gonna storm your house and shoot you <laughs> down. <laughs> the greatest army enforcement on planet Earth belongs to the U.S. IRS. Okay, is it? I think the the revenue, the the tax collectors of the U.S. is the greatest army in this whole world. <laughs> so in 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 that respect, you know, he's lucky that he's a Chinese person. He doesn't even get to go to prison for what he does. He just does basically doesn't act anymore, which is fine, you know. He already had enough money for the rest of his life. If his he if it was America, it would be <laughs> So always look on the bright side of life. Think about a spam a lot. Okay. Always look on the bright side of life. <laughs> Life's a piece of shit. <coughs> when you look at it, isn't it? The, the, the lyrics. But we must always face the curtain with a bow. I think that's, that's the lyrics from spam a lot, which is perfect for them in this case. The, the olden days of me being, being crazy about musicals. One HK is less, I think. HKD is less than R&B these days. Yeah, it used to be more, but now it's less. <clears throat> Do 
there, there probably are a lot of actors who have this type of problems and, and they should just like look at the situation and, and come clean now. <laughs> Save their career and future earnings. You know, it's pretty silly. It's pretty silly. The, the, so basically in China, the, the, the rough thing is if you earn something as one person, for example, you're an actor, you get paid uh, doing a film. That is considered your personal income, right? And then for a lot of actors and also like internet celebrities, what they do is they, they, they do a company. They set up a studio right in their name, but, but it's their studio and it becomes a company and the money goes into that company's business account to be considered as the business's earning. And in that case, it's a different way of taxing. So it's no longer a personal tax, which if you earn beyond the point, the tax is very, very high. It's 45% of your earning. So you kind of lose half of the money you earn if it's on your personal earning beyond the point. So they would have a company set up and then put the money in that and say that's the company's earning. And because it's a business, there's a different way of taxing it and using different, you know, just, just go around meandering the, 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 the rules. You can actually reduce significantly the amount of tax you need to pay. And I think that's most of the actors things like what they're doing and why, why the tax, you know, is like this. Um, so, they wouldn't have to pay like 45% of their earning and they, they pay like 15 to 20%, I think. And like, I can't remember the exact number, but if you have a company set up, you can do that. And then that's strictly speaking, not really because, because it's not a real company. It's not like you employ 10 people and who are working, like making stuff like, like, you know, it, it's still you actually earn the money. You just, you just put it in a company's bank account. Um, so strictly speaking, that's, that's, mm, but for most of them, that's, that's, that's how it works and then how it gets found out and then considered to be tax evasion. <sighs> Blue Whisper is 17, right? I think tomorrow, no, day after tomorrow. Blue Whisper is 17. I think 16 is the uh, 影帝的 Gongzhu, Xu Zhengxi, and Zhou Jiechong. And then today is Yu Sheng. Right? I think so. Today is Yu Sheng. I, I don't know if it's aired. I haven't checked it yet. I got up. I, I, I got up. I had to watch the two episodes update of Lie Zui Tu Jie and then Under the Skin and then put on makeup and sit down. So I haven't checked anything else. Apart from, apart from the news of Deng Lun, which just rushed to me before I actually went out looking for it. <laughs> uh, Anle, Anle, probably this year, but not now. Uh, later? Probably not even in the first half of the year. I just, yeah, just wait a bit more. In Yang contract, a different scenario. Yeah, in Yang contract is is basically they actually get more money, but then on paper they get less. Whereas setting up a company is you already get the money, you just you just make it not your personal income, but the company's income. So it's different. Honestly, I really want to under the skin to have more seasons. I think they don't need to wrap up anything. They probably can just, just end as usual. It's like they figure out a case and then it's, it's done. And then I don't know if the script writers are happy to write future stuff for this drama or it gets money to do so. It would be cool if they can continue. I, I definitely love that dynamic of the team they've set up with, um, with pretty much everybody on, 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 on that, uh, police, Sort of team, the leader, the, the different function people. It works very well to get a bit more water. I'll be back in a sec. I 
don't. Uh, yeah, I won't spoil anything. I, I, I can't. You can't really spoil this drama. I ought to, like like it's for sure in the end everything is gonna be perfect, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and 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 they just you they just continue working as policemen because there's gonna be supposedly in their universe future cases that keeps coming. It, right from the beginning you can tell this is the type of drama that that's not gonna be. It's not really although the main character's personal line is important, it doesn't it doesn't take. The, the majority of time and screen time too. It's still the specific cases that takes like 70% of the screen time. Um, and then their personal line is tagged along that thing. So the type of drama it is, it's not gonna, it's not gonna like have a huge sort of thing. Thank you for super chat. Chun Ming L. Liu Li Ling. <laughs> What's your surname? Um, um, curious about that name's Chinese. Bright Spring, <laughs> and thank you. Yeah, Momo Go Go. That 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 edit is already pretty much done. I'm just waiting for the last four episodes. Well, including today's and tomorrow's, all, all the footage coming in so that I can have uh, the fullest possible range of shots to choose from. Aisha, thank you for your super chat. <laughs> Lin, ah, nice. You know, you know, for for like Yan Qing Xiaoshuo, romantic novels or um, period dramas or um, Wuxia Xiaoshuo, the most popular surname in Chinese, one of them is Lin. Highest possibility of a main character. Lin Shu from Nirvana in Fire, one. Lin Xi from Nirvana in Fire, two. Um, and for both male and female, it's a really popular surname, Lin, because it's pretty. Lin Chunming, very pretty. Bright spring in the forest. I can I can do a painting on that name, huh? Well, right now my fridge is asleep, but but it will come up. For sure, and then my heater is also asleep, but it will also come up. Okay, <laughs> don't worry about. It. You're gonna hear them. Yeah, it's a very common surname. It's r rather common, but it's popular in in novels for some reason. There, are, there are people have have statistically analyzed novels and the top ten surnames. I remember it includes Ling, Lu, Bai. Um, Lu is the, uh, the, 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 the ground, the, the continent, Lu, and then Bai is white, Bai Yu, Bai. Uh, these three for sure are on top 10 list. The rest I can't, I can't remember, but, but I've read it somewhere. Lin definitely comes up in, in the first 10. <clears throat> in terms of how many people have the surname, it's not, not, not like top 10 in China. But but popularity in novel and yeah somehow people just find it pretty I think um, in numbers Li uh, Wang Zhang Liu Li these four are the most common in Chinese uh, can't remember which one comes first probably Zhang or Wang so if the Wang Wang Yibo uh, Zhang uh, well, so many sh people with Zhang, you know, you can just just like count an uh, endless Zhang out there. Uh, Liu is also very common. Liu Yifei, uh, for example, Li also very common. Li Yifeng. So Zhang, uh, Liu, Wang Liu, Zhang Li. These are the four most common surname in Chinese. Yeah, Ling is different from Liung. Two things. The without G, without G is double wood. So it's wood and wood. Two characters means wood and forest adding together. Whereas the one with G, Liung, Liung, oh, 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 with the sound, it, it is the uh, two water dot uh, character that that can mean a couple of different things, but it totally is nothing to do with wood. And less common, yeah, less common. Ling is common enough, but not the most common. 
So basically, that that's how you like not the top ten. Joe Joe is yeah Joe is mm, mm, Joe is very neutral I think both in novel and and also in reality, uh, but pretty a lot pretty much yeah, a lot of people have that name. Let me think who has the weirdest. I mean, Tan Jian Si has a really unusual surname. He's the only person I've ever come across who actually has that surname. There are a couple of people I've met in my life who are the only one with that surname. I never came across another person with that surname. He is one of them. Yeah, it's very very rare because Tan usually in Chinese is that Tan is um with Yan on the side and then. Who, who who has the other Tan? Tan Yongling, the singer, the singer, you know from Hong Kong, uh, old singer from Hong Kong. That Tan is the commoner. More often you come across that Tan. Where whereas Tan Jian Si, which literally is sandalwood, I think, in China, the the that character, I don't see any other people using that <laughs> as surname. It's a small small surname, very small. Ju actually is not that unusual. I've come across a couple of people with Ju. Um, there's an even less common Ju, which look very similar to that. Ju Jing is Ju, but it's that one is super super rare. I came across one person with that. And the surname is funny. Lu Han, not I mean Lu is not that common, but it's it's known. It's not like as crazily unknown as a couple of other things. Ouyang, Ouyang is not that uncommon because double surnames are very. There are only a couple, like like handful of double surnames. So, pretty much every double surname is known to Chinese people because there are only that many. Are there any left? Yeah, yeah. All the, pretty much all all the royal. Imperial names are still here, apart from like the names of certain ethnic groups that have basically died out in history. Other otherwise, they're all here, like Tang, Tang Dynasty, Li family. I mean, one of the biggest surname in China now. Uh, Song Dynasty, Zhao, which is also very common. Um, technically speaking, on my mother's side. It's actually my lineage. Although you have to count back how many generations. I can't remember, but her her family tree actually exists. It's crazy in her hometown, and they can literally count back to the imperial family of Song Dynasty. <laughs> so I'm a, I'm the distant, 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 distant. Multiply, multiply, multiply. Zero percent, zero zero one blood relative of the Song Dynasty imperial family. Although. That's just on paper, you know. Who knows? In between those generations, how many people actually cheated on each other, and and actually me meaning at the end of the <laughs> nobody actually has has its blood anymore. <laughs> Can't vouch for your ancestors, you know. People are wild. So, <clears throat> I'm just joking. Uh, Wu Wu is just the, also a very common surname. No, 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 no. My mother is. If you have to say princess, okay, technically, spe technically speaking, she still has that surname, whereas I don't have it anymore. <laughs> she, <laughs> uh, you know, technically speaking, in a patriarchal society, it counts only the father's name. So, by her generation, she's got four brothers. So her four brothers still ha has that surname, whereas um. Uh, their children would also have that surname, whereas I don't have it anymore. But but that doesn't. If she comes from a objectively poor family, okay. So yeah, it's nothing. It's just funny that she. It's funny that she has like possible like a possibility of tracing it back, but. Jun Zi Zhi Zhe, Wu Shi Er Zhan. 
<laughs> Anyone know that? So, <clears throat> Lu is not that common. Like Lu, there are three Lu, at least, surnames that are totally different Chinese characters. They just all sound same, the same. One is the continent character, Lu. One is the deer, like Lu Han, Lu, which is the animal deer. Um, another one is Lu, which is road. So you have continent, road, and deer. Three characters all sounds exactly the same and can all be used as surnames of Lu. So depending on which Lu you're talking about, right? It's either that common or not that common. Okay. <clears throat> People gotta go, Cynthia. Good night. Bye bye. Go back on the floor. Oh, you're working? <laughs> anyway. Ah, I see Becky. Hi, Becky. <clears throat> I'm majoring. Well, I, technically speaking, um, I did major in English literature. That's my first degree, but it's not like when you learn, you know, go to university and learn like in English literature, you're going to get trained just speaking. <laughs> You basically most of the time you read stuff and you write liter lit literary um, criticism essays, like you talk about this guy's novel, that guy's poetry. That's pretty much what you do. So like, how much can it help? I I'm not quite sure. I did read a lot of weird stuff though. <laughs> Short novel, long novel, poetry, play. I still have to say I hate Hamlet because of. There are just too many words that I, that I don't understand. <laughs> the vocabulary is a nightmare to read, but it's still better than reading Chinese translations because Chinese translations is even harder to understand. <clears throat> anyway, yeah, so, so like, I don't know how, how that is helpful. I, I think in my early days learning English, the best help I got was um, when I was in the UK, I had a television, in my dorm room and I turn it on on channel 4 or BBC news and I have it play at a really low volume but pretty much constantly apart from when I'm sleeping so while I was do doing other things in the room that television is running and just talking and talking and talking apart from when I go to sleep and then I, I, I still remember first three months a difference happened and then after half a year, six months of doing that when I was in the UK, that there was a sudden change when suddenly my super fast speaking uh, English profs, whatever they're saying, I, I can understand. I, and if there's a word that I don't recognize, I can, I can keep it like I can keep it empty there, but the rest of the sentence are still here. I can just pick it out and then leave it but i understand the rest of the thing and i don't get bothered by not being able to follow one word i think that's half a year after i went to the uk before that i just got normal education in china in high school so but it's a very personal case i don't know like it probably would be useless to any other people in terms of like how you get 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 it i don't know it just happened quantum leap I mean, that's the only way I can explain it. It's like overdose on, on language and suddenly pop. It just happens. <clears throat> what is a fandom? Oh, don't give me a fandom. I hate fandoms. I, you see, like I, 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 I suffer from all kinds of people's fandoms. <sighs> fandom people are so crazy and so many bullies out there. So I don't ever want to fandom. Please do not fan me. Oh heavens, no, no, okay? Like, like, friends, subscribers, okay? Even followers is a weird word. I'm very, very, <laughs> and fans. No, don't ever use fan, okay? For yourself on me. 
I, I, I dare not take um, that responsibility and, and I, I'm, no, no. <laughs> you just happen to come across my channel and, and, and we have a yuanfen, okay? Appreciate that and then j j just, just a subscriber is, is good enough, okay? No fan. No, 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 no. <laughs> See the word fan? And I'm like, wrong! <laughs> Escape as fast as I can. Legally Romance, I did. Can you believe it? I actually forced myself to watch eight episodes, 10 episodes of it, and I couldn't continue. I don't have a huge problem with it, but I feel the drama is pretty much... Like, I don't know why I watch it. Nothing makes me happy of that drama. Although, although I do have to say Song Zhuo is really pretty, but her pretty face is not enough to hold me to the drama because everything else is pretty. Huang Zitao's acting is just... I don't think he understands what acting is. Like, he's not bad, okay? He's not like embarrassingly doesn't know how to hold himself in front of a camera, but he doesn't understand what character means. Everything he plays is himself and, and, and he doesn't even think about, okay, for this particular character, do I need to design his ways of speaking, his mannerism? Because of his background, he needs to be like that. Like, I don't think he processed that at all. He just, he just thinks, like, I, I'll just speak the line as naturally as a human would do as Huang Zitao. So every role he plays is Huang Zitao, even his hairstyle. Like, honestly, have you ever seen an elite lawyer with that haircut your client is gonna run away from you and not gonna trust you the, the 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 judges are gonna look at you weird it's a bloody serious job and when his haircut and when he's like smirks come on the screen like that I'm, oh, seriously you're playing a lawyer really <laughs> I mean, I don't have any problems with him, right? But honestly, like, I think he should just stay in, 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 in variety show and entertainment, that type of, don't be an actor. He's not bad, but then he doesn't care about characters. He's himself, like 100%, full on. And you just see Huang Zitao all the time. And I can't believe his character, basically. When I watch him act, I'm like, yeah, but, but like, that's no, like, I don't believe you are that character. I feel like any moment he's gonna suddenly go salute. <laughs> he's he's gonna he's gonna suddenly just 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 start to do idol stuff. So it, it's a very weird watching experience. It's like on one hand, you know, you don't have a big problem. On the other, it's like yeah, but I don't believe I don't believe a word you say. <laughs> So, so it's hard for me to continue watching it just because it's just so him. It's not the character. Like, he's his full hundred percent Huang Zitao. <laughs> Bailu Luo Yunxi, they have uh, finished. I think Bailu is wrapped. Other people probably are close to wrapping. That drama is close to finishing, but has haven't officially said the entire thing is done. It's Bai Lu's part is done, I think. <clears throat> Am I married? Well, not gonna tell you. How about that? Can I just keep a little bit mystery, hey? Uh, uh. <laughs> not that it actually matters, but keep guessing. Crappy acting and horror in the script in Chinese drama. Well, every country has a lot of crappy stuff. It just depends on how much actually get get like you get exposed to. I'm pretty sure. And and also China makes too many dramas compared to other countries. But compared to itself, it has reduced significantly in the last couple of years compared to say 2014 to 17. These days, it has number has come down at least 30 percent to 40 percent. But still, it's a lot of dramas. Um, so, if you make that many drama, you have that many more opportunities to fuck up, basically. <laughs> right? Proportionally speaking, right? So, so other, for example, another country makes 100 dramas a year, and then 80% of it is bad. Then it has only 80% of bad, 
dramas, but China makes 4,000. <laughs> so like you have like 3,200 that are crap, you know, that type of thing. <clears throat> Following Pei Ni Qiao Chi Fan, I'm not doing it now. I'm just waiting for it to completely wrap and then take it in one go. That's my, that's my plan. Right now, I'm very under the skin. I'm 100% I'm under the skin. You see why I'm doing a live today is because during the weekend, I usually do my videos on the weekend and then I edit and do subtitles and put them out, you know, on Tuesday and Thursday. But because since last week, I've been editing one video a day for under the skin that, that I don't have hours to, to basically film myself anymore. That's why I'm doing live today because I literally don't have a video. <laughs> And I was thinking whether I should make a video talking about um, Legally Romance because I did watch 10 episodes. But then I was like, what can I say about that drama? Even if I watch 10 episodes, my brain is blank about that drama. It's like I don't have anything that I think is worth talking about about that drama. So I was like, ah, fuck it. <laughs> I'm, just gonna, I'm just gonna do a live today and then do a final review after tomorrow's last episode of Under the Skin and then just call this week. I am far more interested in doing editing, edits on dramas than, than filming myself talking. There, there really isn't that much to look at. You know, it's this old face that I've seen for last how many years of my life. <laughs> I'd rather edit and look at pretty guys' faces and use, use my, 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 my scissors magic to make a normal scene of two people talking look like sex. <laughs> I am far more interested in doing that, unfortunately. But, but those things don't earn me money because copyright, right? So doing drama reviews is, is, is like, my, like my second choice. Oh, oh, oh. After, after, if I could actually earn a lot of money by edit, edit, I would much, I would be much happier to to just do edits, and not not talk about it. But I don't have a choice. We live in a copyright disaster era, where something that's supposed, supposedly to 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 protect creativity is in all kinds of ways imaginable, hindering it. Um, but hey, you know, like everything else in this world is pretty ridiculous anyway. It, it's not the most ridiculous things. So, make do, make do. <clears throat> Any news on Shi Qimi Ni? I'm not quite sure about that drama, what it is. I haven't heard about it. Ai Qi is, is pretty bad. Ai Qi is like, Ai Qi is higher management of their content creating department ha, have cut down a lot of people. A lot of people have quit or moved to other platforms or left it recently. Ai Qi, probably if, if all the three major platforms, if any of them are gonna die, probably Ai Qi will be the first to, to, which is sad because it has the best content. Although I don't like it, but I still have to say it has the comparatively speaking best content. But hey, but, but, but then there's also a news that just came out actually. Um, it, it's not happening yet, but it's on the way, which is Tencent with all likelihood considered in China as a huge conglomerate company is gonna get broken up. Like from top down, China is gonna force Tencent to break and that just happened. It hasn't been confirmed yet in terms of when and how it's done, but news is in the air. Tencent is gonna have to break up, break up whether it likes it or not. Huh? Just sit, let's just sit and eat melons. <clears throat> yeah, breaking a huge company into parts so that it doesn't monopolize things. Because Tencent has its tentacles in too many things, too many, way too many. So, it's on the way. <laughs> I just heard it actually half a day ago. So, 
<laughs> seven cent and breaking it into ten different, and each one is called one cent. Would that be one cent? One cent number one, one cent number two, one cent number three, and it's like ten one cent. <clears throat> Eating melons. BBC, uh, accent. Hmm. I, I right now I, I definitely have a more more North American accent. Like I don't even know what I sound like, but it doesn't matter as long as people can understand me. I don't care. Um, like if I have to force myself to speak with a particular type of accent, I can do it. But I have to keep thinking about it, and I don't want to do it. Um, Five, six, seven. Oh, I'm just count the years. I can't remember. Actually, about ten years ago, I speak with full British accent, like super British, <laughs> like like more British than British people. Um, very choppy consonants and very short. Sh well, I can't even do it now. But very <laughs> short vowels. Um, yeah, so 10 years ago, I sound totally different. Just with the same voice, but a different accent. And then, and then, and then Canada took me. What can I say? I mean, I lived in Canada for that long. I can't just keep that British accent. It would be very weird. Especially when I, when I was in school and in studios and we were like, you know, doing designs and stuff. And we would talk to other students and, and profs. It's like, you're the only person who speaks with a weird accent among everyone, and it's so weird. And you, you, you start to lose it, right? Gradually. But if I need to, like, if I hear somebody speak, let's say they say an example in British accent of some, some like, lines, you know, and I can repeat that. I can repeat in their s sound, but... If I have to do it myself, then it's hard. It's, I have to force myself to think about it all the time. <sighs> Unless I'm doing dubbing, you know? I can do a very convincing Mary Crawley from, from down, Downton Abbey. Because <clears throat> she has a rather low voice and I can do that type of voice too. Um, I think I have the video on Billy Billy. Anybody want to check it out? You can go and check it out. My my dubbing video of 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 her. Kira Knightley is also do, doable for me, but only when I hear them and I can repeat. But if I have to think about them just just out of nothing, you know, right now I can't do it. I have to hear first what they sound like and then I copy. It's already very it's it's already hard because it's my it's my foreign language, right? <laughs> Can't push it too far. Kind of. Ah, immortality. Well, Sha Po Lang is also Tencent. Tan Jian Si and Chen Zhe Yuan, Sha Po Lang, uh, and and Chen Fei Yu, Luo Yun Xi, immortality. They're all Tencent dramas, both of them. But hey, these days BL drama adaptation drama, it, it's either tomorrow or like. Two decades later. <laughs> Honestly, though, I'm not that worried. Um, even if it doesn't air, it's it's already done. It's somewhere in this world, and one day it's gonna come out. There will be a way for it to come out. You know, you can't you can't predict what future is gonna be. Twenty years from now, on the technology and 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 how we like use internet and how content gets consumed is right now unimaginable for us. So it could be. It will just come out in ways that, you know, like you can't control it. And, and then everybody will see it. And even if it's two decades later, you know, so what? As long as you're still alive, you're still gonna see it. So the more important thing is, is stay healthy, everyone, okay? Stay fit, get exercises, eat well, like, like be responsible, avoid danger. <laughs> Don't risk your life and jump off a cliff for the fun of it so that you live longer. And if you can live another five, ten decades, you're gonna see it. I guarantee you, it's gonna come up. Okay? Time is the magic of this world. Everything eventually will come up. <laughs> live long enough to see. That's our goal. 活久见.
活久见 ，OK， our goal is 活久见。So even if BL dramas like no longer shows up for ten years, so what? I live till I'm hundred and fifty years old. I'm still gonna see it. <laughs> even when the actors are or old and gray, you know, we can just all be old ladies, ladies and old men, you know, like like this. And the actors and us are all old by then. But then we can see their like five decades ago drama. Together, we may actually even be in the same elderly home as fans <laughs> and actors, and watching their like five decades ago drama that didn't get aired <laughs> together. <laughs> Don't say it's not possible, okay? I think it's highly possible, and it would be extremely funny. <laughs> I can write a script on that. It would be so fun. <laughs> oh, I'm already laughing myself <laughs> out. <laughs> I, I I I get like excited by my own now <clears> don't <throat> immortality. <laughs> yeah, see the drama is called immortality. <clears throat> so so don't worry. <laughs> Oh god, <laughs> so funny! <laughs> you know, you know there is, a, you, you, you know there is this um the, the 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 software that you can put your photo in, and then it will spit out a when you are older, like when you are old man, what you'll look like. You you can put the actors' photos in, and then just see it. And then imagine with that face that they're in the elderly elderly home watching their own dramas. <laughs> oh, oh, heavens! It's too funny. Well, right now I don't, I can't do that type of edit because right now technology is not uh, that good. It can only do a photo. It cannot do a video. So if you have a video and you want to age everybody、um, easily and with cheap, like quick, you can do it on home computer. Deep fake is not at that level yet for everyone to access it easily. But ten years later, probably it can. So maybe wait ten years and get all the footages now and then age all the actors and make that edit. Oh, it's too funny, heavens!、Oh. <laughs> yeah, like you can be a grandpa or grandma and watching that drama with your grandchildren. <laughs> and in the same elderly home, and pointing out, is like, see, see that this guy in, like, see, that's him, that's him, fifty years ago. You know the guy who just lost Ma Jiang with your grandma yesterday. He just lost three thousand RMB playing Ma Jiang with me yesterday. That's him. That's him. See it? <laughs> oh God, it's so weird. <laughs> well, well, if some people can do it, that's cool. But they have supercomputers. I don't. Oh heavens! We 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 we've been talking about for like close to an hour and still haven't gotten to ships, <clears throat> which is the title of this live stream. See how fast time can fly. So so it keeps. In in no time you're gonna see, fifty years down the road, the 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 the, the fridge, the refrigerated dramas come to life. Yeah, as long as the actors don't get cancelled, that's important. Don't get cancelled. <sighs> even if they get cancelled, it still doesn't mean like five decades later they're not gonna come back. With time, things can just turn around completely or totally change or you no know, absolute things in this world. 
<clears throat> Why actor refers to each other as teachers? That's a Chinese language thing. Um, it's pretty much like for every profession. If you want to be respectful to the other person, the easiest thing is call them teacher. It does not matter if it's a policeman, real teacher, doctor, actor, you know, lawyer, honestly, does not matter. Um, call them 老师 means first you put yourself kind of at one generation below, right? And, and then it's always safe and, and both gender. It's always the safest thing to show you're very respectful. You just call them 老师. So they 互相, they call each other 老师, which sometimes is really funny. But but it's it's like one of the default thing you go to. It doesn't actually mean they're teacher, but 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 it's 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 just in the language. Yeah, if they can get usually speaking, okay, if it's Chinese drama, it's very hard for it to only get released outside of China. And then also because of the very contested content, if it gets released outside China, for sure Chinese people are gonna import it, right? Like internet people are just gonna grab it off Amazon or whatever, HBO, whatever, Netflix, and put it back on in China. So in that way, it still gets aired in China, it's gonna piss the authority off. And that's probably gonna come down at people making that thing happening if they haven't really like got the agree like got agreed and, and allowed to do that. And if they go ahead with like release it internationally and then it gets basically imported back by Chinese people again, it's gonna fuck up everything, you know, like their future career, the, the, the like you know, so they're not gonna do it unless it's actually like the authority says, yeah, you can do it then it will happen but if that doesn't like if it doesn't first get actually allowed it would not happen think about that like 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 like, like honestly if they the, co the the production companies the actors everybody involved in this industry if they still want to continue working in this industry they're not going to do it unless they just want to release it and then they're they're, they're saying, yeah we get banned but we don't care we don't do dramas in china anymore i don't work in this field anymore i go and open the coffee shop if they can do that, uh, probably, yeah, that can work, but otherwise, wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't work, right? You're like, uh, think about it, the logic. I'll, I'll wait till it's 10.30, just just so that it's 10.30. <laughs> and then talk about recent my recent infatuation with the drama. But it's not it's not too over the top ex, uh, exciting, it's just good enough. You know, you didn't really miss anything. <clears throat> I didn't talk much about BL. Steamy sea drama. Some short dramas on on anybody watching the Gongju Zhang Gongju Zai Shang, which is on Kuai Shou. It's like the Chi the other TikTok in China. Anyone? I don't use it, so I don't watch it. I watch people taking it down and put it on other platforms. I don't have Kuai Shou. It's it's like it's vertical. First it's vertical, and then it's a short like the short short super short every sh episode one minute drama. And it's like the grand princess on top from Kuai Shou. And, and that's the type of, it's, it's like pretty steamy. It's more steamy than the long dramas that goes on proper platforms. But, but because it's super short, so it doesn't have logic. It doesn't have progression. It doesn't have steps and steps and steps people take to have the relationships get to a point. It just show you the highlights, the moments of suddenly pushing something onto the bed. You know, that type of moments. 
<laughs> it only cuts, it's like it's already edited a drama down to the... It's in itself like an edit I make for drama. It concentrates a possible 40 episode story into a minute, two, three, like that. Um, and Kuai Shou is doing that and with that drama they have the very unknown like young actor, actresses, pretty ones and then totally dubbed and in and, and, and vertical form just give you one minute per episode of, of, of a princess and, and a bodyguard story it has bad scenes that, that's like more than long dramas would do but it still doesn't go to the extreme level <clears throat> yeah so, so if people are watching that you know it, it's another way of short short video platforms trying to test their waters of getting into the long video platforms business but I don't think it's gonna be overall successful because stories have their internal logic of things you know there's a good reason why films are usually one hour and a half longer ones two hours three hours there's a reason why you have a hundred pages of script as usually how things are done for film and there's a reason why episodic dramas are, are about schedule or, or set up like that because that's how our brain processes information I mean not saying these days with with uh, with internet we don't have more scattered and shorter you know stimulants but overall basically for a story to grow in you you know to to have it rooted like not just just excitement for one second and goes away if it needs to root it needs time and it needs convincing and it needs to have stages of things it's like developing your cancer you're not gonna t get terminal tumor in one day you know it has to take time to grow and for short super snippet one minute dramas it doesn't have that allowance so it gets it, it's more like um instant gratification thing but it only works in that moment once it's done it's it, it it leaves no impression so good luck to them I don't think it's gonna work but I mean for 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 when you go to the toilet and poop for that 10 minute it, 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 it you can use the time to do that it's like that's the purposeful one minute drama I think that's the best way of using it is when you take a poop <laughs> It's, it's a good thing to watch because it's really fast so once you, you, you and th those type of like for the 10 minutes you get in entertained and afterwards you don't remember anything a proper way like a real like it's it's really kill the time like it literally kills the time <sighs> so on Thursday, I'm gonna make my final review on Under the Skin, so I'm, I'm gonna probably talk, I mean that one would be more like a thought through, concentrated, planned, in points video now I'm just gonna randomly come up and talk about whatever I think about this drama so if you've been watching that drama and ship 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 that's my major ship this year don't have any other ship happening even reset I really like the two leads but first it's too short second you know 90% of the time they're trying to not die and <laughs> there's only tiny part that that's really sh like shipping material is too little basically so I did like Bai Jingting and Zhao Jingmai but it it's not enough basically to root a CP for me for that length so 2022 my first screen shipping uh, ha, is, is again March talking about March I don't understand why March has been weird for the last couple of years last year you know okay I don't need to say anymore last year's March March April May I pretty much had three months completely destroyed by a drama <laughs> mm yeah and waking up like 5 a.m every day is not the best thing um then the year before uh my roommate is a detective is also a march drama hmm? then the year before is 2019 which march didn't have a hugely popular drama for me 
that year was untamed, so that was a that was a June, July, August drama. Then before that, it's too early. It's twenty. It's twenty eighteen. Eighteen was summer with Guardian. Seventeen. January. Was ten miles something like that. So so, but for the last two years, March have been weird. Okay, it's first it's all male male, uh, CP, and 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 then it's one detective drama, one BL adaptation wuxia drama. Now another detective drama. Weird. So I don't know if next year March it's gonna be the same thing. Hey, we we can we can hope for that. <laughs> March March syndrome. Anyway, um, so that's the first ship I, I, I have for this year and I'm very happy and unexpected. I remember very clearly last year when I first heard about this drama's news and, and like about these two being in the detective drama, then I think watching the first trailer, they edited a very, very like edit, edit trailer that, that, that's like um, a little bit show off, right? Like a, a very strong show off energy that I was worried about. I was like, uh, drumby. <laughs> Chinese, anybody want to learn that word? It's very useful. Drumby, okay. It has a very drumby trailer and I was very worried because I hate trailers being taking that position. It usually, it usually ends up slapping across its own face. So when I watched the first trailer of Under the Skin, I was worried about the drumby thing. And also, I think because my impression of uh, Jin Shi Jia still comes from first is the second He Shen, Tianjin Mystics, and then it's from uh, the Twenty Year Life On that drama that he plays one of the sort of one of the girls' boy prospective boyfriend that didn't work out, um, and 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 in both dramas he he has that little bit of vibe of. B1, <laughs> Drumby, okay? It's just like that, that, that type of energy. So I was worried about Under the Skin being another one that's gonna, that's gonna just like take on that, that, that thing. It's very off putting. But this drama isn't. Uh, lucky us. Lucky us, hey? It, it's not. And it works out really well. It, I totally didn't see this one. My expectation of it was totally different and I couldn't, like at least in my brain when I tried to picture before uh, how the dynamic of the two leads are gonna work out, it's a totally different picture than what it turned out to be right now. So I'm really, really, really happy about it. Um, Under the skin, it gets better um, after the first, like the first two episodes, I wasn't very happy about, like particularly Jin Shi Jia's character. I just, I just was like, oh, what, what is he, what is he doing? Uh, it's kind of overacted, and but then afterwards, it it just, it just kind of eased off like really, really nicely. And by this point, which is the last, but four. So tomorrow, last two episodes, it's done. By this point, it has completely moved on like to to the comfortable like thing of his acting. It's very, it's very weird. I think, I'm not sure for this drama whether they actually filmed chronologically. So, so when they first got start shooting, they shot the first couple of episodes and pretty much following the script. For contemporary dramas, it's easier to do that because they literally just have that one city and one set. So within the set itself, they could film it episodically as the story progresses, the character progresses, they film that. And then for exterior shots, often it gets jumbled up because of a limit of access to places and travel schedules and everything. So usually for contemporary drama that has like a case-based drama that has a location, that's the police station that they always come back to and they have a lot of things doing, figuring out in that same place. They have the possibility of doing things more in the order of the story happening, shooting them. 
I don't know if for this drama it's the same situation, but it definitely works easier than period dramas where it's 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 set based and set needs to get dismantled and built and dismantled and built. So they often have different stages of things just all get filmed first and then film the other set. Um, and that would cause a problem of things being more challenging to actors. I, I just have the feeling, I don't know if they did it that well, but that way, but in the drama itself, we really do see like early stage Jin Shijia's acting is, is, is not really tuned very nicely. And then later, passing episode five, six, it starts to get much, much better and, and keep getting better. So I feel that may be the case, but like, I don't know, I don't have proof. <sighs> yeah, Shen Yi is consistent because he, he's the, he's the, he, first he's the lead, he's actually the lead. Um, Jin Shijia is the special lead. Um, but then he, when the story starts, which is current timeline, he already kind of is, he is the person who comes in and muddy the water for the police station for Jin Shijia's role. So Jin Shijia is the person who gets the shock and he has to deal with it. Whereas Shen Yi is the person who knows he's gonna, he knows he's gonna come in and, 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 and you know, get, get, get some, some <laughs> challenges. So it's reasonable that Shen Yi is a more stable character that he already is at a place when it started. And whereas Jin Shijia's story at the beginning was like classic. We have, we, we are, we are at odds and, and I don't like you type of ca character set up. And later, later they become, you know, pals. So, um, in that sense, you know, um, Shen Yi's role kind of already knows where he's going right from the beginning, whereas Jin Shijia's role needs to, uh, Du Cheng's role needs to, need, need, needs to have that change. So that's why I feel Jin Shijia's acting is a little bit, um, th th there's a gap basically between the part where, when he started off on a very, very, very wrong <laughs> note of things, and then it starts to get better. First two episodes, he really is not likable. And I think some of it is a little bit over the top, but I don't know if it's due to, cause the drama, I think it originally they had 24 episodes and they got cut down to 20. So some of the parts get, get removed, whether it's due to there's actually more that didn't get shown, um, that, that give you that feeling or, or it's just directing or whatever. Um, the early sort of, how he, how angry he is towards the other guy is a little bit like unwarranted at the level. And I think overplaying it a little bit. And he acts too on the external side of things, right? It's too all on the outside of things and theatrical, basically a little bit too theatrical. And Tan Jensen's acting is totally on the cinematic type. Is is like in close up, he is acting. And his best acting moments comes from this shot this framing of Tan Jianzi. Whereas Jin Shijia, he's the type of actor, probably naturally, and also just, just at the beginning of the drama, <laughs> he is the best at, at that. <laughs> he's, he's, he's like the wider shot actor. So in the beginning, I didn't like it. I, I was like, what oh, Jin Shijia, what are you doing? I was like, hey, your acting is just not there. It, it doesn't work. And then later it got better after first couple of episodes, it, it starts to like, oh, okay. <laughs> finally, finally, I can, I can see the, the close up actor. <laughs> but that's just, just very much my intuitive, intuitive gauging of this drama. Um, I, I have a couple of other friends who we've talked about this and similar reactions, but but I'm happy. Like after the first couple of episodes, I'm, I'm, I start to get really happy about how it works out.
I'll, I'll be back in a bit. I'm back. Oh, actually. <laughs> I forgot my, my mug. I bought this mug because the color looks similar to my to my channel color. Not exactly, but close enough. <sighs> yeah. See a lot of interesting talks about other dramas. I, I don't have time to watch a lot of other dramas. I know they're ongoing. And I've been to I've been told about a couple of dramas that are really good right now, like Korean dramas and other. I'm like, I don't have time. <laughs> I wish I have 12, 48 hours today, but I don't. <clears throat> ah, feeding the cat. Yeah, it's my imaginary pet. Pet. So, since I have an imaginary pet, you know I don't have a real pet, and I would love to have one, but I, I, I haven't been able to get one for all kinds of reasons. One day. Oh, Shen Yi's cat is so adorable. Holy moly, that cat is so cute. The white cat, because white cat is not my favorite type of cat, but that cat is so cute. Oh. I just love it. Oh, that cat is so good. Oh, oh. That white cat is so adorable. And particularly in the recent episode, like when he was making his paint and the cat is playing with the uh, paintbrush. Oh, oh. Melting. I melted because of that cat. <clears throat> and it melts with a really nice voice. Cats, cats and crews, and how crews treat cats. Uh, I'm not gonna go there. Yeah. That's a lucky cat. Very adorable. <clears throat> I have an imaginary? I don't have an imaginary husband. I think that the word husband sounds very... Because a lot of other words extended from husband is really weird. In English. Like the word husbandry. You know? <laughs> the cat, cat forgot... Well, I mean, cats are always very individualistic, so... They take care of themselves, right? They're not like dogs. Um. <clears throat> hmm. <clears throat> if I see a question I can't answer, I will help. If, if I don't have any idea what you're talking about. 
other people help help, help this person out. Okay, <laughs> I'm like, uh, I have no idea what they're asking. <laughs> Momo go go. I I don't know what I should be feeling because I was watching this drama and I really liked it. But on one hand, I hope it can get more popular, more people watching it because I think it deserves it. And then also, more people watching would be mean meaning more content creating out of it. You know, like like fan fictions, edits, like I, I, I mean, I have no problems of taking other people's stuff and have fun with it. So like, I just wanna, want it to be more popular. So more people would be just constantly digging sugar, which is fun, you know, just for the fun of it. But this drama has natural limits. First is, um, it's short, it's only 20 episodes. Then it's being aired at the unimaginably fast schedule which usually doesn't happen to to dramas these days it literally finishes airing in 10 days <laughs> since it started right because tomorrow is 16th it will end and it started on 6 so it's 10 days from day 1 to day 10 done <clears throat> because of that um it's too short on air um it's not gonna be able to cook it basically you know the the the, the simmering of it it's people haven't even noticed this drama exists and it's already ending. Um, so that's another thing about this drama not getting very popular, which, which I feel really unfortunate and sad. But then I'd rather have a solid quality drama that is reasonably paced, short, than having the same content but actually got made into a thirty episodes draggy drama that destroys everything. Like I'd rather have it short. It would be a better drama in that way. Also, because because of what has happened in entertainment business since last year, um, if this type of drama gets too popular, right, like explosive popular, it may not be a good thing for anybody involved. I mean, people are going to make a lot of money out of it, for sure, involved in this production platform, production company. Uh, the, this, the leading stars probably also are gonna get like endorsement and stuff like that. But but usually it comes with a price. We know what that is, hey. And and often it, it deteriorates into a really really ugly situation. And because of these days, there are just so many land landmines that people can step on in entertainment business and blow you up and cancel your career and fuck it up in every way imaginable. So in another way. When it's popular enough within a small circle where people have high uh, sort of words and, and, and good things to say about it, but then it doesn't get extended too far that, that it catches catches a lot of ill intended people's attention. I, I'd say probably these days it's a better thing. You know? Double edged sword. Uh, getting too popular these days is not a good thing um, if you want the longevity of your career. And I feel like for the two main leads, they probably are both people like that. Like they're more into the type of getting interesting roles and play the long game than the short one. So in that way, it's good that it's not that popular. Because I think with this drama, first this is the popularity thing in ITE within itself, the number is pretty good now. Think about lifelong journey, 58 episodes with that many good actors and really good production. It got to 10,000, slightly over 10,000 popularity, which is um, a data um, sort of way of saying how popular it is within ITE. This drama right now is beyond 8,500. It's like 8,500, a little bit more than that. So with it only being air, on, like on, on air for 10 days, it's already very, very well done. Um, so it's, it definitely has proven to the platform that this IP or this story has, has um, potential and then they ha probably wouldn't lose money on this. And then for the production itself, for the company and for the, um, for the leading actors, it's definitely a good thing on their portfolio for their future stuff. For people who haven't really noticed them 
you know, it's a good thing that they're gonna get more offers because of it in the future. So that is a good, like that in, in the long run, right? For these people to produce more work that's possible for you to see in the future, this is a good thing. So the bad thing is, the bad thing is I wouldn't be able to have as much as, as, as enjoyment as I could have had it, had it been more popular. Uh, but the good thing is long, long, long game. <laughs> more in the future so that's that's what i think about it and i i would say in the first couple of episodes when i was watching it i really just made me want to shuffle out spl yeah i want it that much more because i see tan jian si he is really he's really getting better in every drama he does he really improves and then and that drama styling is beautiful. So he would look great in Shapolang, I'm sure. I mean, think about it. In armor, long hair with single lens with a chain. Like it cannot be prettier than that. That's like, like, like the top of the Chinese BLN styling possibility. <laughs> and he's gonna have armor with wings in that drama. Can you imagine that? And then Chen Zhiyuan is also a pretty boy, a skinny, pretty, tall, <laughs> long hair boy, and two of them standing together. I'm just, ah! So, <laughs> so after watching Under the Skin the first couple of episodes, I was like, oh, I can't wait for Sha Po Long. Now I just want Long that much more. But, but like I can convince myself now. Like with this one, I'm also happy because period dramas and contemporary dramas are still very different and. There are things you can show in period dramas that you will never be able to show in contemporary dramas and vice versa. So there are sides of the actor that I think uh, comes with contemporary dramas of this type that only works with this type and it wouldn't work in a period drama. So I'm happy that, that this drama works for... Like, it, I think it really... If people haven't noticed Tan Jian Si before, they're gonna notice him from this one onwards. I, I'm for sure about that and honestly selfishly i definitely want to watch shapolang now but i think it probably wouldn't be good for him due to the overall environment of things atmosphere of things so although i want to watch a drama for the actor's own good good and sake it's better that it doesn't come out yet you know and i'm happy with this one because this one actually gave me things that I didn't expect. Like Shapolang, if it airs, I think it will fit my expectation. In terms of if it will go beyond, probably if they have really good moments that like push their acting envelope further than before, I would say, wow. But in a way that's still within my expectation because just by thinking about Chen Zhiyuan's previous work and Tan Jian's previous work and what they look like and with the styling that, that's being leaked online, I have a good like i can anticipate it like i i have the feeling like i know what it will look like and and how it will work it's it's always in the in expected realm whereas under the skin totally wasn't expected at all I, I didn't expect it's gonna play out in this way basically i totally didn't expect it i wouldn't couldn't have imagined it so now i have it which is oh okay it's, it's always more ex more exciting to see things you didn't expect it than you did, you know? So in that, in that I'm very happy. Actually more, more, more happier than I expected. <clears throat> Nigeria about 5 p.m. Though I feel you're biased when it comes to some actors. Why do you think I should not be biased? You know, I'm not the goddess of justice who has her eyes blindfolded and holding that and <laughs> standing in front of the court is like, I don't care about it. Blah, blah, blah. I am, I am the justice and absolute object, objective like standard of the world. Thank you for hoping that much for me, but I cannot do it. As long as I'm trapped in this personal perspective of being one human. 
I know my limits, okay? And I will always have my preferences and I will always have my bias. Before I can gain the perspective of the entire humanity of 70 billion people on this planet all together in one, like once, that's gonna be a biased opinion. <laughs> And sorry about that, <laughs> I don't have God power. And I'm gonna be continuously very biased about people. That's what I will promise everyone. Subscribing to my channel is you're gonna get my personal biased opinion for sure, but I will also promise it's gonna be honest personal biased opinion. If you like everything, it means you don't like anything. If you like everything the same, then, then that, that means you don't like anything because there's no differentiation anymore, right? Or you, you'll be like a news, news bulletin reading AI if you like everybody equally. I mean, Ultimately, I believe that's the universe's truth, which is actually everything is the same thing. But then you wouldn't lose the fun. Experiences of the universe happens because you have a singular perspective and then you have, you have likes and dislikes, right? If you happen to be able to have the overall perspective, then you would not have the ability to, to have that. And boring, <laughs> boring, okay? I would love to be able to still pick some things I prefer instead of just love everything equally. Maybe ultimately, ultimately, you know, ultimate goal of, of evolution is that you will gain the God perspective, but before that, before that happens, if it happens tomorrow, let me today have my wild preference game. And I totally know I have a types. That's totally okay. I think everyone has that. There are just some people who work on you and some don't. And same thing, you know, like, like there are very good looking, pretty people out there that everybody says they're good looking and pretty. And you kind of see that too, but it just doesn't work on you. But then there are other people who may be not, not that pretty or good looking, you know, but, but somehow it works on you. Just, 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 your button, you know, it's your button. <laughs> and, and, and you can't explain that. It, it either is or not. Mm. Mm. <clears throat> For example, I am biased towards tangents. And, and totally biased, okay? Uh, but, but that's because it's, it's, it's tied to my own experience and can't, I can't erase that in my memory. <laughs> in this timeline, because of what happened before, therefore something is like this. Um, for, for the people who you've actually had personal contact with, it's always different from, from people you've never had and hmm. So yeah, I'm biased for sure. Anyone remembering my crying video that I didn't show up uh, years ago on my channel? That's really old. <laughs> if you've been that long on this channel, you know, cause I have so many videos, I wouldn't task you to find out all the old, digging out all the old skeletons. But, but a couple of years ago when he was in that show, like I think I made a video that, that, that I didn't show up cause I was crying so much that I look horrible so I didn't I didn't put myself on camera but I was like voicing 
you should have known that, you know, from that on, that point on. I always, I've always had a filter, and I always hoped it would be, you know, more. Mm. And, and pretty much everybody on the crew, I think, back then when we were doing that film, and when when the crew are chatting off camera and and, and you know on days off and because on set it's boring. Okay, ninety percent of the time you're waiting for the camera to get set up and film. So the actors, the uh, every person on set working is, is boring, waiting, and have nothing to do. And it was 2007, so there wasn't social media, ha, huh, thank heavens, or short videos, or TikToks and stuff. You don't have ways of kill time on, on, on set. You're just sitting there and chatting. <laughs> That's the only thing you have. And I still remember, like a lot of people, when we were off set, we were just like, yeah, they picked a really cute and, and, and interesting young actor. I'm like, hey, he's gonna have a great future. Cause he's so young, he was only 16, not yet 17, about to turn 17. And then it was his first proper film. And then already with the first film, it's a really recognized director. And all the other actors are famous, like big. So we were like, wow, this is his first film. Imagine, imagine that. He's gonna have like a stardom future like crazy. That's pretty much everybody on set like agreeing with that. Who knows, you know? Who knows things would happen in this way. I think he was already signed to the company that he later uh, went to, the MIC, uh, the, the, the boy band. He was already signed at the point when he was doing the film. I remember him saying that. So. So it's kind of a, he's not lucky, right? He has good material to work with, to start with as an actor, but he's very unlucky in timing. When he, when he decided basically to sign and then go down the uh, boy band route, they actually put a lot of effort into doing a proper, highly, highly <laughs> trained boy band with singing and dancing, but they kind of ran into the wrong time because it was the rising of the Korean pop in China, the popularity. So all the attention got, got, got taken, right? And then they were like <laughs> trained for four years, like a military camp level. So, so, they, so that band just missed all the timing of things and never got anywhere. And that also stopped his acting career because he couldn't be acting. He, he had to do the boy band thing until much later came, he came back to acting. By then, nobody really knows him as an actor. And he has to start with roles that are tiny and basically doing auditions like everyone else and because he, he really doesn't have that, many, that much stuff to show uh, on his portfolio at that point, I think. And then appearance-wise, he, he's not the most striking person. <laughs> Let's be honest, he's not that tall. And for a guy, sometimes you have to be like 180 at least, right? To, to work for, for whatever purpose of idol dramas need, need to fulfill. So he's had like a lot of ups and downs and, and, and just unfortunate timing of things. So by, by the time that the uh, I'm the actor, that variety show happened, it's already what, 10 years? Yeah, uh, after that, and I was like, I, I've been waiting for this guy to show up someday somewhere and getting really famous, and <laughs> it's like a decade. He still is nowhere to be seen. And I was like, oh, what happened? I would really wonder where he, he, he's gone. Because uh, he started off like acting at a really, really... Most of the actors wouldn't even expect at age 16 they'd be leading a film by that casting. And then it just like like it starts really high and boom, <laughs> it just disappears. Um, well, but but now you know like people have different different life path to walk. Who knows if it's for better or for for worse. And also, like getting super popular and super successful, you know, ultimately may not be that good a thing. You know, at a good level of popular, like you are recognized at a certain level, but but then you still get 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 to keep some of your privacy. You don't get bothered that much. You have more freedom of choosing what you want to do because you are not that famous. And I think there's a sweet spot for this type of celebrity and public figures to, to find, which is like not too famous, but famous enough. Like that would be ideal. 
when when you are the top two people that comes to everyone's mind when you talk about popularity, that means you're the target also for everyone. Not the best thing, really. <sighs> C drama Discord. Yeah, the Discord is still there, but because of all kinds of things, uh, it's invite only right now. I don't know if I'm gonna open it anytime soon. Also because the moderators, they have to. They don't have that much time to deal with all the dramas that goes on if it gets opened. <laughs> you know, for, for, for my moderators, it's too much work for them to deal with like influx of people. Um, so it's currently just like, yeah, hanging there. But uh, I don't know, in the future we shall see, right? Right now it's, it, it is what it is. It's just like, it's still functioning, but, but you need to get an invite to get in there. Yeah, we're talking about Tan Jian Si, in case anyone is curious. Yeah, so, because his first film, proper, proper first leading man film, I don't know if before that he did anything, I don't think, because I remember he said he didn't, but anyway, um, his first film he worked on as a, the lead is also my first film that I worked on in this industry. It's my first job. So it's always gonna be special. And not, not, not mentioning it happened at my hometown, which is my city. Not to mention, not to mention that I, that I actually had a lot to do with how they get a set done. Like a really hard to access set and, and basically, I did every, like, I used my family connections to make it possible for the film to actually film certain things at a certain place that didn't get filmed before and didn't get filmed after. It, it's left on film stock forever just for that one film in that way because le later it got dismantled. So it's a historical record of that steel plant. If you know Chongqing it used to be a really heavy industry city and Chongqing steel plant is very well known. But it's heavy pollution, it's really, really bad. And then so by the year 2007, they're already in the stage of decommission. They're moving to a new site that's in a different district. And the old steel plant is still functioning, but parts of it is being shut down slowly. And then, so after that film got shot, a couple of years later, it got completely dismantled. Everything broke, broken and then taken into parts and sold. And then the new plant got built somewhere else. Now that site is a industrial park, um, industrial heritage park, but pretty much 99% of its structure are gone completely. They erased it. The tracks, the steel tower plant, like mills, all, all those things, little, little trains, all gone. It's no longer there. Now you go there, it's not there. It's totally gone. And it got kept on film because of this film and some of the really cool shots of that steel plant. Um, and, and, and yeah, my use for that film was using my family connections to help that crew to actually get access to film some crazy shots. They actually went into the, uh, the, the couple of places that they would not allow other people to actually go in because of how dangerous it is. Like the giant, giant cauldron of like melting steel is like on the track and, and being, being, being transported and the actors actually go over that bridge and then looking over it. <laughs> like they wouldn't allow people to get that close to that if it wasn't for personal connections. So that's my contribution to that film. Uh, <laughs> so it's a very special film, okay, to me. Not that, that it's the greatest thing, and some of the like the back like like the backstage stories of that 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 film is <laughs> pretty ridiculous, but because it's my first first thing, it always is gonna be interesting and special to me. So everybody that I met on that crew has a special <laughs> personal thing. Uh, to me, and and therefore, you know, I will be as biased as I like. 
back then that film was actually when they were shooting, it's a different title. It's not the current title, Mi An, which is Lost in Jiaojins in English. Not that at all. It's a totally different name. And it'll be like a code name. Like a code name. If in the future I meet anyone, you know, on the crew again, I'd be using the old, old shooting working title of that film. I was like, I was on that crew, hey? Just to prove that I was really <laughs> on that crew. Because <laughs> it had a different name. It's really cool. <clears throat> so, it's good to see people after that many years, you know, have finally, finally gotten somewhere that I think they really do deserve it. But it just, just hasn't happened very, uh, you know, promptly. <laughs> but come to think of that, you know, it, 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 you always have to think about whether it's, you know, actually for the better. Because now I think if he gets popular, starts to get popular now, he's older, it's, it's, it's safer. You tend to be more experienced and older and more, more aware of what you want and what you really want. And you don't get so easily swinged by, by others when you get older. So that actually probably is a good thing. Instead of being popular and super explosively successful at early age, you know, like if you're a teenager and you suddenly get really popular, I don't know how many people can actually, <laughs> you know, stay, stay on the balance of things and don't go wild and crazy. We've had too many successful idols who are globally, who are too successful, Successful, too young, and they their life up in all kinds of imaginable ways or unimaginable ways. Bye for people. Good night. Underrated actor series. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to do specific like this type of like. I, I did the background one, but I think that's very neutral. Um, doesn't really talk about much in terms of specific actors you know like i don't want to jinx people like i said so in today's atmosphere heavens you know if i made a video on Dong Lun a couple of i don't know months ago talking about i would feel guilty basically now because somehow i feel like <laughs> fate is a weird thing so that's why i don't make those type of personal videos on specific actors anymore just in case just in case Underrated actors, yeah. Well, we can do it in probably in, in stream. <laughs> I can think about that. I can do a stream where I don't I don't plan that much, and then it wouldn't be that many people watching it because it's too long, rambling. Nobody has time to watch two hours of me talking. Therefore, no, not that many people will hear it. I wouldn't time code it. I wouldn't sub subtitle it, so a lot of other people wouldn't understand it. <laughs> if if that's like yeah, we can do we can do a stream next time. Underrated actors, just just talking about that unscripted i think that's safer nobody would notice like because it will be it won't be searchable once it happens although it's still on youtube there's no tax on it in any way that people will be able to search it <laughs> so so nobody would know i jinxed people if it happened huh <laughs> Overrated. Oh, <laughs> sister, not just sister. You're not a good person to say that. Overrated actors. You want me to talk about overrated actors? Do you want me to get murdered? I'm already on the fandom list of a couple of people. Uh, fandom hit list of a couple of actors. Come on, you you want to add more? Like add more? Add me on more lists. <laughs> Rent level. <laughs> yeah, the scale is just the scale is just superficially in, imposed thing. It really doesn't mean much. I don't have like a hard list of requirement to say you hit this level, hit that level. It more is comes from a feeling of things. <laughs> 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 
most of the idol popular actors are overrated. Or let's say 99% of those top popular actors are all overrated. Can, that's it. A blanket statement. But it's true. And then if you want to hear more about specific people, you have to pay me. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> Not gonna offer it for free. And thank you forever from DSG. Thank you. <laughs> Don't worry about that. It's just like, wo. Oh, coming back to Under the Skin. Um, the other day I was thinking why I feel this drama is particularly interesting or this particular screen. I wouldn't say they're a couple because they're not officially a couple. They're, they're like two leads of a team, right? The how. The traditional two guys go on a journey and go on a venture type of like we figure out problems together. Um, I, 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 was, I was going over every type of two male leads detective or crime related type of drama that would include from 17 onwards that will include Tianjin Mystic 1 and 2 and 2 has Jing Shijia in it it will include Guardian SCI the one with Yin Zheng and Jai Tianling that I can't remember the English title but I made videos on and I like that drama like at least most of it not the ending um, and then that will also include my roommate is a detective. Um, uh, anything else that I've watched that has this nature basically of two guys investigating and figuring out cases, whether it's in what time setting and whether it's more fantastical or not. Um, and this, 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 uh, under the skin. So I, I was trying to figure out why this one feels a little bit different from everything I've seen before or like at least when I when I ship them, I ship in a very different way in my head. I was trying to figure it out. Um, so if anyone out there has also watched all those dramas I've mentioned and I'm curious about what you feel, you know, let me know. It's like if you like this drama as well, and then you've watched some of the other dramas I've just mentioned, like Tinder Mystic, I mean, yeah, even Sherlock Holmes, you know, like Sherlock, on, I mean, globally speaking. And, but, but then if, if we break it into global, it's too, too many, right? And there are too many I haven't watched. If it's only limited in Chinese drama land, you know, from Tinder Mystic to Guardian to CSI, uh, SCI to, 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 Yin Zheng and, and Jai Tianling's, I still can't remember its title. <laughs> um, uh, the, 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 the roommate detective and this one, you know. So these are all similar dramas with, with that nature. Mm. If you've watched most of it, you know. If, and also if you've shipped it, like if it doesn't happen, then. If you've shipped a couple of other CPs and then you've also watched this one. I'm curious to see like how you how people view that or do you have do you feel a difference or do you feel like it's pretty much the same or you don't care <laughs> you know because for me it's really different and I was trying to figure out logically like I, the feeling is different but logically I was trying to figure out why and I think I have a couple of reasons but but then I'm just curious to see if other people have seen similar things <laughs> Hmm, interesting. High difference? Yeah, that's definitely definitely an important point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> Crispin's day. That's one of the points I noticed too, I agree. The ob obnoxious thing. Um, Killer Hiller, I haven't watched. That's why I, I didn't mention it. I don't I don't know it very well. But for the ones I've watched, I, I've just mentioned all of them. Um. <laughs> I 
anyway, not watch. Don't be my fan. Don't be my fan. Just be a subscriber. All right. And when you don't want to subscribe, you can leave in peace. <laughs> don't fan me. I uh, dare not take on that. <laughs> Just be a be a Avenue X's subscriber would be ah uh, neutral and uh, and and nice. <clears throat> 主播窗外的景色是真的吗? I guess I have to go out and play with snow to show you that it's real. <laughs> Otherwise, I can't prove that, hey? Yeah, I'm looking at people's points. I think I just I'm just curious to see if everyone sees it in similar ways, at least, you know? You never know how other people view the same thing. We have different routing in our brain. Yeah, we're not talking about real people. We're talking about drama CP or, or drama characters. Real people is like, <laughs> come on. People are just so complicated and also Acting is just their job, you know, off camera, they have their own life. Um, and they're in no way the same thing as their characters. <laughs> cool. So, interesting. I I've seen that. Um, people's toys. So, so we have similar ideas. Yeah, I'm not so off point. <laughs> okay, to me, when I try to analyze why I feel this couple on screen is a little bit different from my previous um, detective two guys drama that I liked. Um, point one being, um, in all the previous ones, I think the two leads are in many ways very similar actors in both outward appearance and in style of acting almost and you kind of would put them in the same category of actors height wise obviously most of them are like similar height you know a couple of centimeter difference is not a big thing um, then almost like the type wise you have the pretty boy type actors, you have the more masculinity, manly looking actors, you have the more theatrical actors, you have the more cinematic actors. So for um, the previous CPs I can think of, pretty much every drama, they have the actors who are, I would say roughly belonging to the same category, whether it's outward appearance or the style of acting, a type of acting, they, they would all kind of be, you know, the, the, the same type. So, um, for the CP they create, that there's a particular dynamics that comes with this type of design of people. Um, that's, hi, oh, thank you, Rosie. Thank you for loving my channel. Thank you for super chat. Um, and then for this drama, it's totally different. Um, the two types of actors, I would never put them in the same category under any circumstances, basically, for me, looking at actors. Style-wise, like, I'll, I'll work, well, <laughs> it's a tall and not tall, and, and more like the big built guy and the, the, the pretty boy type. So the more men type and pretty boy type, totally different. And then even like in their acting style, they're very different. Um, Tan Jian Si is the Ye Sheng, <laughs> what we call the, 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 the wild grown thing. Like, he never got academic training in this. And his acting is less about more theatrically projecting than more about, more about internal things. It, it's more like he basically he works better in close up shots. In, with Tan Jian's acting, right? Not saying he, like the, 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 the magnetic thing comes with him with this type of shots where you can see the eyes and very tiny, tiny, tiny movements on his face, like the, the expression muscles. 
and 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 it's more like the eyes kind of draw you in. He's he's more like this type of actor, whereas Jin Shijia definitely more the theatrical type, more like um you can imagine him doing a a theater play, with all that gesture, and projection of his voice because he he has a rather um. What's the word for it? Less bassy, more concentrated and sharp voice. So, and and his acting tends to be more. Chu tao, <laughs> right? It has like like a more grain grainy texture. He's not so refined, refined type of actor. Not saying he can't act. I'm just saying the style of acting, the pro the projected image of him. So there are two types of actors, and then they look so different. So, usually for for coupling up a two guys, you go for the looking similar or like similar, you know, on par basically, right? Because even like for fandoms, they're gonna be un unreasonably comparing, like you know, whose shoulder is wider and who's taller, that type of thing. And and usually you get these two people picked at very similar um, boat to start with. But 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 Liu Zhu Tujian picked the other route. It was like let's just pick two guys as far apart as possible. I mean they're both young actors and who who are pretty good. But then <laughs> let's just make them look like it's so different from each other that you would you would like initially it's like there's no way these two can can couple up right. So that's like an interesting dynamic um, that I don't have in other dramas that I've seen that, that, that works like this and it, it's just interesting seeing how that plan works out in this drama. So that's the first thing I can tell which is like they're very different actors and somehow that works. Um, it, it really gets like very well articulated by I think the viewers who would term them as the dog and cat and it's the sort of the uh, police dog, the big one the shepherds or the like the bigger dogs <laughs> in dogs <laughs> for Jin Shijia's row and then the cat for Tan Tian Si's row and it does remind you of those cartoon or those manga drawings of, um, of a big big giant police dog and a tiny tiny cat who have, who have a good friendship type of thing it it almost is like the human version of that type of story. And I don't think previous any of the CPs work like that. Right? Um, so that's also, <laughs> it's very easy to, to elicit <laughs> that idea in, in your head of things. So also, another point is this is not a BL drama at all. It just happens to have two guys leading it. Mm. And I like the fact that, that they don't they don't they don't they don't sell on it at all they the drama itself within the drama doesn't and the actors they don't do that either they're just like and the story is 70 percent about the cases itself you know and the personal story tag along but they don't take the absolute center stage of everything so it has a really good way of keeping it in the right place where for all the audiences who love to watch the CP thing, you can dig sugar how much as you like. But you know, officially, and also just the drama itself, it doesn't emphasize on that. And it doesn't sell, like it doesn't do, oh, slow-mo of the two guys, you know, like it doesn't do those shots. That clearly is, is, is usually, you can, you can see when the dramas do that, they, they are hoping that people are gonna pick up on it. And they're, se they're selling the drama on it. And they're baiting, they're baiting the audiences very, very intentionally. And usually when that happens, it, it, it's kind of like it works in reverse. It makes people like, you're forcing me to ship it. Therefore, I, I don't want to ship it. Uh, so the nice thing about this drama is it really doesn't officially try to make you ship it at all. But then however you want to ship it is your own business. I like that aspect of it. So I think that's another point that it works very nicely, but it works different than other CPs because 
the other previous ones I can think of, I can always detect a level of intentionally baiting you. <laughs> you know, whether it's a lot or tiny bit. Some dramas do it overboard. Some dramas, because it's BL based, and, and then you already know what you're going in for. So that doesn't really, you know, but, but for the other dramas that don't actually have a BL based at all, they just, they just happen to have two guys, right? That there's a level of baiting. And, and, and this one really doesn't. So that actually works really well. I mean, after watching it, I, I enjoyed it more than if you intentionally bait it. Um, so great differences, different types of actors, baiting, not baiting. Um, and I mean, obviously also just because the drama is still focused on crime and cases instead of the two, two their relationship just gets developed along, right? And there are so many good cases. Don't overlook that. I think, although I ship it a lot, I really appreciate some of the crime cases they've done in this drama. And it's written by, I think it's written by female writers and you can totally see that. Like there's so many cases that are around very, very big social problems and things that's to do with women. And, you know, domestic violence, um, even sexual orientation, um, like your your anxieties about appearance and looks and so many, like you are, it, it, it has so many cases that are thoughtfully written. And I appreciate that a lot, a lot, a lot. And you can tell like, okay, okay. It makes sense that, that it's written by people like that. So don't overlook that aspect. I think it helps the drama to be heavier than, than it, if it, they only focus on the relationship of the two guys, it, it wouldn't be this meaningful. Um, and, and through like dealing with those cases, you see how the characters treat these things and all their perspectives and you appreciate those characters more. <clears throat> yeah, well, the, the, it, you talk about the punishment things, it, it's because like police are, you know, law and law sometimes ideally law stand for the moral justice and things, but you know how it works in reality, right? Um, it, it's almost like, yeah, the bad guy deserves to die really, but, but then because the other people killed him, so they have to pay the price too. And, and I mean, like there's, you can't have, a, have basically can't have, have the story run the other way. If, if you do, the drama would not exist. It, like it wouldn't pass censorship. Particularly when it's regarding crime and cases, it basically has to follow laws in China. If the law says this is like this, it has to happen that way. Like you can't just have a, <laughs> somehow miraculously that like it doesn't happen. Um, so that that's like the physical, sort of like a, the, there's this structure outside that you can break um, for all kinds of crime dramas in China. It's for sure like that, 100%. And so it's one of the harder things to write for writers because there might be a lot of red tapes and then if this doesn't get passed, they have to, you know, change it. So it's harder for them to write this type of stories, uh, for sure. Um, so, I mean, there's a level of like how far you can push it, but I think for Under the Skin, they really push the envelope as far as possible. Like when you think about the, 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 the two girls case, the high school case, that's like, this is like the absolute limit, right? You can't, you can't get just pause that. Like, it, imagine that, right? They're already pushing it to the, to the. It's on the like right on the brink of your lips, in type of type of like we are gonna be like talking about it explicitly, right? Just holding one step back about what they're doing, and and making it past censorship. I mean, I was like really surprised about that case. And then, and then for other things, you know, too, like, I'm, I'm just happy that they actually write cases in that. And they're all very in time re re relevant, whether it's like cheating the elderly people out of their, you know, life saving case, you know, all the cases involved, basically they have very close ties to what's going on right now. And, and so that aspect really helped the drama to be like I said, getting people would take it more serious then say it's just, um, you know, two guys <laughs> figuring out cases drama.
So that part I really appreciate with this drama. And then the, and then they don't overdo it, right? To make it like the two guys are gonna save the save the end of Earth. They they don't have superpowers, so that I also like. And in terms of like Shen Yi's ability, some of it I think is a little bit dramatized and uh, dramatized in terms of particular one particular two particular cases how it gets done. But the possibility of people being able to do the drawing is real. Um, there are actually documentaries in China about two really well-known policemen who've been doing this for their life and who are very well-known and who have cracked cases that are unimaginably crazy. I mean, in a way, actually crazier in a drama. In terms of how they are able to draw things that, that, that actually turn out to be super close to reality beyond your imagination level. So these people do exist, these police, they're very rare in China. I think overall only hundred of them in the entirety of China. And so every provinces get allocated like two or three people, that's it. And they have so much workload because everyone needs them. And there aren't that many people who, who can do it. So the whole sort of forensic artist being able to draw the thing is real and some of the real cases that got broken because of people being able to do those drawings are more exciting than the ones you see in the drama but then there, there are definitely versions of how it gets done in the drama that that's dramatized and they did get they did get the real forensic artists on board with a lot of things and there's also like a recent live stream they did with one of the most well-known policemen who did this for a living with Tan Jian Si, with, uh, with, a, with a host, with another person, like four of them had this live stream and talking about, talking about this drama and how they work together and then... <laughs> and I think the policeman drew a Tan Jian Si like in two minutes while they were having a live stream. He drew him and then he, he, he was like, I'm gonna send this drawing to you. Leave, leave me your contact detail, which is really cool. So in, in terms of like um, whether, whether being able to draw at that level is possible, uh, this drama is not overstating it too much. Although they definitely have a, like a couple of like really probably way too, way too easy getting to the, to, to the result cases. Um, so anything else I need to talk about? Uh, let me think. Oh, uh, uh, no, pretty much like that's all I can think of. But I think this, this one worked for me really, really well. I really, 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 really <laughs> like it. And definitely after the first half, the, 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 the two characters start to work really well together. And then I start to see like Jin Shi Jia's acting relaxing. Because his earlier act, acting is too intentionally acting, his character. You almost feel like it's unreasonable that he acts that way and it doesn't get warranted, but later it works. It starts to make sense. Um, oh, and I have to say, I really appreciate one point, which is Jin, Shi, Jin Shijia is fatter <laughs> is in this drama than compared to him in Tianjin Mystics too. I think he's at the lower limit of his weight when he was in that drama as Xiao He Shen. Tianjin Mystic too. He was too skinny in that drama. He was way too skinny. And, and, and when he's skinny, he looks very, he looks very threatening. Because he's very tall, he's like 190 already. And then he has, like when he has all those chiseled lines of his face, it just makes him look like he's really hard to deal with. And you, you're like, uh, the moment you see this guy, you're like, I want to walk away from you. <laughs> he's like, don't, don't get close to me. He's way too threatening when he's thin. Um, but when he starts to put on a bit of weight, immediately that effect is like so much more reduced. And, and he, like when his cheek starts to get, he, he starts to become much more softer and, and funnier. So later in the drama, when all the moments of like funny things happen, comedy happen, it works. 
um, and it no longer feels because I think because Tan Jian Si is at the lower limit of his weight when he filmed this drama due to he did Sha Po Lang and managed to keep his weight around there. So he already is the 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 the, the more fragile, prettier one. If you have a, a, the other guy also of the, the the skinny type, it's just there's too much sharp corners of this drama, right? You need that balance off, and it really works that he's fatter. <laughs> I I love the plumpier Jin Shijia much more than the skinnier Jin Shijia because when he was skinny, I just I was like, <laughs> you know, he's like. <laughs> Stay away, stay away. And this guy looks very dangerous. Whereas when he's pump, I'm like, ah, adorable, adorable, adorable giant shepherd dog. <laughs> um, if they're short, um, they probably get less gigs. Yeah. Uh, also because how they pair up with female actors, right? If you're too tall, it's hard to put you two in one shot and looking good. If you're too short, also. So there's the ideal level. For Chinese men, usually the ideal height of a guy, of an actor, is 180. You can be slightly, you can be over that, like 185. That's the limit. If you're beyond 185, you're also hard to cast um, because it's harder to put you in with a, say, 165 female actress. You have 20 centimeter difference. And it's hard to for the cameraman to frame you, basically. And you have to always be <laughs> Get a get an apple box ready for every shot. It's 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 just a lot of more work. Um, if you're beyond that that height, it's hard. So Hui Tian usually like I think he's actually one ninety two, and he would he would he would publicly say he's one eighty eight, but it's not true. He's one ninety two. I think he's too tall. So one eighty five is like the upper limit of ideal. If you're beyond that, you're too tall. And then if you're too like if you're only one seventy for like Tan Jian Si, it's also a little bit too short to pair you up with most of the actresses. Um, so there definitely is an ideal height of things, yeah. But then also you have to consider still is if you're a good enough actor, all those can be overlooked. Jin Shijia, Jin Shijia is one, I think his official height is 189. And I think it's pretty accurate. And Tan Jian Si says he's 174. Well, I cannot be sure about that because I remember when I met, <laughs> back in 2007, I don't think he was 174 yet, but then he was only 16, not even 17, like a turning 17. So he could have, grown a couple of more centimeters after that for sure. So 174 could be, but I, I remember when we were filming that film, he was not 174. <laughs> that I can tell you for sure. When he was 17, he wasn't. Later, he probably grew a little bit because I know what 174 looked like. He's slightly shorter than that when, when I met him. Um, don't tell, because, because, yeah, because I have a sweetheart in high school who is exactly 174. <laughs> so I know exactly when I look at a 174 person where my eye line is. <laughs> so you can't like trick me, trick me with that. I, I 100% sure. But later, after he's 17, I mean, if he grew a couple of more centimeters, that's totally for a guy, like 100% believable. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> so he could be 174 now, yeah. And I don't think he would lie about that. And there's no need. He's like, he, he is very cool about him not being very tall. Yeah, Liu Yuning is super tall. I think he's also like close to 190 or something. And then if you're curious, Tan Jin Shijia is, is a professional swimmer before he uh, quit sports and became an actor. I think his highest performance was in the youth competition with the national, Chinese national sort of swimming competition for the youth group. So not adult group yet. He was like number three in freestyle. 
So he's a he's a proper swimmer. You can tell that in this drama, he's a swimmer, and th that's why they picked him for Tianjin Mystic to take Li Xian's role, because there's a lot of underwater thing, and you have to have a really good swimmer for that, for that. And in this drama, he also does swimming and diving things. You can tell. And then Tan Jian Si is also a very professional sportsman, uh, but in the dancing department, he's the ballroom dancer. Who had he not chosen the career of being a boy in the boy band and actor, probably will advance to become one of the best ballroom dancers of his generation in China. He was really good. Um, for like, he was from Beiwu as well. Anyone curious about that school? <laughs> I've talked about it before. And he majored in ballroom and he said he can do all 10 types of uh, ballroom dancing. Uh, not sure which, like, because there are more than 10, I think, these days, but I don't know what, like, the ones that he's specialized in. But definitely the, the, the normal, like, common most, like, cha cha and whatever. Um, waltz, uh, and what, what else? Uh, I can't remember all the English name, but anyway, like he's really good at, at, at ballroom dancing. Uh, he's like number one in a Chinese competition in when he was in dance school, and then international one, he was number four. Can't remember which one. And then <laughs> I remember him 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 telling me really funny. He was like, he's like. He was like, it, had I still stayed there <laughs> when he was doing the film, he was like, had I still, you know, like chosen to be a dancer, I was, I was like, I, I, I would go to Blackpool. Anyone, you know, you know, know about Blackpool in England, Blackpool, uh, the, the ballroom dancing thing. He was like, I'm going to get like, I will get like, I don't know, ranks and whatever in Blackpool. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> nice to know that. <clears throat> So they're actually both very good at sports, but in very different ways, and and you can you can see that right. <laughs> they're two very good at sports people, but I wonder if like now now that Tan Jian Si is no longer doing boy band stuff, he still occasionally dances, but focusing more on dan uh, more on acting for sure. Back in the days, he was a great dancer. Wow, it's already close to 12. We're gonna do it at 12, something like that, a little bit beyond, and then call it a day. I'm very happy today, so <laughs> I'm chatty. Thank you for people who've been here for like the whole thing. Like, you're very patient. It's already close to two hours and a half. Started at 9 30. Now it's almost 12. Anything else funny? Oh, I, I just remembered. Uh, there's one thing that Tan Jian Si said, really funny, that many years ago, when he was only 16. He was like, one day we, we, we finished filming and he was like walking along this van. I still remember, it's a white van. And they would be like going into the van <clears throat> to take a break. It's a bad van, it doesn't have air conditioning and it's super hot. And he was listening to music and he was just talking and he said, do you know, like when I sing, I really sound like Justin Timberlake. <laughs> so I remember that line till today. I don't know why, but he was like really, really like just a teenager boy feeling very good about himself. He's like, do you know when I sing, I sound very much like Justin Timberlake. And I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> uh, I remember that very well. I don't know why, but it's just funny. <clears throat> I don't think he sounds like Justin Timberlake at all, but hey, he thinks so, so I don't know. <laughs> like Anybody who's, who's heard him singing, do you agree? I don't think he sounds like Justin Timberlake. I think just because Justin Timberlake was really popular back then and he, he kind of like used him as a role model, I don't know. <laughs> so he, he was like, I sound like Justin Timberlake. I'm not sure about that, but hey, I, I didn't hear him sing. 
so I don't know. I only I only saw him dancing. And, and during during that film, he he had not no need to sing really. So couldn't tell. But 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 <laughs> but. <laughs> I don't. I, I'm curious. You know, in the future, if I ever come across and meet him again, I don't know. In the future, I would ask him. Do you st still think you sound like Justin Timberlake? <clears throat> yeah, his his voice is not as as high pitched and delicate as Justin Timberlake's. He he has a much 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 like as a metallic sound here. Put that on the No. Because I think back then everybody on the crew just treat him like a baby. He's so young. He's the youngest person on crew. He was like seven, like seventeen, right? Everyone is like older. Um, makeup, continuity, camera, everybody. Even even like the people who work, like the hard labor job of carrying heavy stuff here and there, or we call 厂工. Everyone is older. He's the youngest. Even Ma Sichun is older, I think. I can't remember if what what year is Ma Sichun. Ma Sichun is around the same year, I think, seventeen something. Anyway, he's young. So so everyone is like pretty much treating him like the the, the kid, you know, at at, at on set, and they're ba they they babysit him. No, he's not dubbed. Under the skin is all real live recording. You can hear the environment sound. It's really clear. Shh, like a couple of lines they did re-record. They changed the lines. You can see the lip don't sync. But a lot of the shots are actually like filmed on set and the sound is on set. You hear you hear the imperfections of live recording. <clears throat> Dark history. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when you are a teenager, you're definitely right, feeling very good about yourself. I mean, he 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 was like back then that film, right? He, Karen Ma was 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 her uh, was his co-star. Jiang Wenli, Zheng Zhiwei, Chen Yixun, Yi Sen from Hong Kong, and you have Zhang Yibai as the director. I mean that's like a really, 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 really high level casting already at the time, and he was like what seventeen. So like if he feels very good about himself, that's totally like understandable. <laughs> I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel weird like if he feels way too good about himself back then. <laughs> uh, so yeah, whatever. Well, that was that was fun. <sighs> what did you do on set? I was director's assistant. We have like the director had two different di two assistants. Uh, one one is a guy, the other is me, and we were like most of the time together doing stuff. Um, but but I pretty much followed the entire shoot. So apart from a couple of night shoot that I wasn't needed, and they had to go out to a exterior weird set to film one sequence that doesn't need me being there apart from that most of the shots i was i was oh and also there was a couple of shots they filmed outside of Chongqing in in the further away town for one shot i think one scene that i wasn't there and then pretty much everything i was uh, there was a lot of funny things happening there and it was hot it was july so oh so any of you time traveler happens to be i don't know who's watching my videos you could be a superman if you want to time travel and see 17 year old Tan Jian Si, or even meet like Mo Wen Wei, uh, Chen Yixun, I can tell you where you can find them at a particular time and location. And then the rest is up to your luck. <laughs> Back in 2007, July, Chongqing, I can even tell you the actual address of the set and where most of the time these people are filming. So if you can time travel, you can literally go back to that point and influence history. And see and see the younger and totally different looking me that you wouldn't recognize. <laughs> Let me be back in a bit.
Hoing. Oh, 12. Okay, another 10 minutes and something like that, I'm gonna be gone. Uh, I'm still working movies. Well, in the, I, I'm in Canada, so I can't, I can't be working on movies in China. But I, I, th there are some kind of collaborations ongoing, but I don't know how it's gonna pan out, so I'm not gonna say about it now. If in the future, if if every if anything really materializes in the future, you'll know, okay. But if it doesn't, then <laughs> it's just like yeah, <laughs> I'll I'll just not let people know it. I am still connected to that industry, but but in very but in very um not direct or heavily involved ways type of thing so yeah yeah i've met yeah chen yixun but chen yixun that was like 15 years ago so i have no idea what he's like now <laughs> 15 years ago oh my god he's he he's so energetic i don't know like i've never met an actor who is a celebrity who is that energetic he's like on steroids all the time you wouldn't believe how, how much energy he has. I don't know if he was on something back then. I have no idea. But, but Chen Yixin was like 100% there. You know, you know how like lively he would be? He, he would be like, even during the shoot when there's nothing to do and everybody's waiting for the light to get set up and he's bored and he has nothing to do, he will start to tap dance with the, uh, with the Chang Gong. Which, which are the people basically who are working the hard labors on set, like hauling stuff, grabbing the heavy gears and, you know, laboring themselves, doing all those on-set jobs. Um, Chen, Yixin, Chen Yixin would be bored out of like, he, he was just like, ah, I can't stay still for even one second if I have to wait here and do nothing. It's boring. He was like, do you want to learn tap dancing? See me dance and, and like, like dance with me. And I was just like, it's hot. It's 40 degrees in the sun in Chongqing, summer. And he would like be tap dancing with, with, with everybody on crew. I'm like, come on, like, don't you have better things to do? Like, like get some AC and then just sit down and chill. Chen Yixing is so like 100% on, on high energy level. I don't know how he does that, but I was like in awe. <laughs> He was always like that. There was there was a scene uh, when he was shot at a, at a vet, like like a like a like a hospital for like it's filled with dogs. It smells like shit. It smells so bad. It's the worst place I've smelled doing films ever. Um, still, I I still remember the smell of that place t till today. Anyway, it was a terrible place to be, and so many barking dogs, so hot, and even in that. That place when we were waiting, he was like making jokes with everyone, and and like he doesn't stop. So that's Chen Yixun, okay, Ethan. I I I am like I I just I, 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 shock, in shock. I was like wow, he has that much energy. Holy holy shit. <clears throat> And then the other person I remember very strongly was back then. I don't know if, if it's still the same person. I think it's Karen Moss, um, assistant is also, also a lady, middle-aged lady, skinny and funny, like funny in a way. like, like we would, we would be, we would be exchanging looks about pretty much everything on set. And somehow we're, we're very similar in terms of our views of things. So we would be joking together about things and, and. Oh, and a lot of the time that girl, that, that lady would be there every time when there needs to be some kind of shot um, of camera, she would, she would be like, yeah, but, 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 but director, she can't do it b b because she has insurance on that. So she cannot do that shot. <laughs> and then you know, the, the, there's this, yeah, it's funny. It's just so funny. <laughs> she can't do that shot. Okay. <laughs> because, because her hands are, are like insured for that much money. So she cannot hold the knife like that. <laughs> okay. So these things are really funny. What else? <clears throat> uh, 
Oh, if, if anyone, any of you, just just in case, like if you've watched this film, you can find it on the internet. It's it's not like it's a very indie, very art house kind of movie. Um, Tan Jian Sen, Mo Wen Wei are kind of a couple, but not really. You know, they really don't go anywhere. And, and but 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 that film. If you watch that film, you'll see Ma Sichun, you'll see Tan Jian Si, Duan Bo Wen, Zeng um, Zhiwei, Mo Wen Wei, uh, Chen Yixun, Jiang Wen Li. So these are the people in the film. <coughs> it's called Lost Indulgence, that's the English title. And, and the poster is Mo Wen Wei's legs. Long legs on Tan Jian Si's lap. <laughs> So the other day I saw a video of him joking about like when he went to an audition, he was very young and the actress just just, just like swing like the her legs and landed the legs on her on his like thigh during the audition and he immediately just like grew all red and exploding and he was talking about that in his um audition and I watched that video. I laughed so much. I was like you were 16 and for a whole summer you were staring at Gary Moss legs and you literally drew flowers on her leg when she was sitting on the sofa putting her legs on your thigh <laughs> What are you talking about? So <coughs> I was like laughing so much when I saw that video that, That's the poster That's his legs and that's Mo Wei, Wei's legs Okay, he was 16. He, he already had Mo Wen Wei's legs, long legs on, her, on him. So like, come on, be honest, guy. Did you forget? <laughs> did, you, did you forget? Like you had that legs on you. <laughs> they have a lot of steamy scenes in that, that film. So if you're curious, uh, you can go and try to find this film. You can probably download it somewhere, pirated copy. It's easy, that film is out there. Um, her legs, yeah, her legs are very long. Um, <laughs> and anyway, so, um, well, what was I trying to say about that? <laughs> I forgot. I was thinking about something else, but I forgot. Oh, oh, I was thinking, if you go and watch that film, uh, and if you notice, in a couple of scenes, you will see Master Chun's uh, back like her school um because she's a high school student in the film she would be having her bag over her shoulder in a couple of scenes that's my bag because <laughs> the prop department forgot to prepare her bag for a scene when she needs to get like in so they were like do you have any okay. they looked around and there's nothing that looks like that belongs to a girl apart from mine which I actually bought just for this film because I don't have one either and I was like I need to carry things so I got a random one that my mother bought from <laughs> from a tiny tiny shop that, that's like under the apartment building that we live she grabbed one and it's a red one with um with with a kind of pa pattern like go ahead and watch the film and so it's the only girl looking like thing that we can find on set and then and so they grabbed my bag. And because of that one shot, the future shots when she needs that bag, I had to give the bag to her because for continuity reasons. So it's the like backpack, basically the backpack going to school type of thing. So <laughs> that film had a lot of my <laughs> memory attached to it. My bag is like this. So if you watch the film, you'll see it, okay. Um, it's mine. I don't know if it's still back home. I, I remember back in my Chongqing parents' home, I still have the uh, notebook that, ha that had um, Chen Yixun, Jiang Wenli, and who? I can't remember their, their signature, their, 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 their autograph on that notebook. It's still at home. Waiting for it to become more expensive in the future. <clears throat> yeah, go and check that Lost and Indulgence Chinese name is Mi An film. And 
and know that pretty much behind every shot you look at in that film, I, I was standing behind the camera. <laughs> my, my job, one of my job was to record because they have a monitor that's set up in a different room usually and the cables connect to the, uh, to, to the camera and they're shooting in a different room or places. And then most of the time director is watching the monitor and every take he would say action and walkie talkie and that, that, that action. And then he would say cut. And if it needs adjustment, he will go to the set and talk to the person and come back. So the monitor, um, the monitor itself, because it's filmed on film stock. So once you film it, you can't see it immediately. It's not digital, you know, not like today you can, you can see it. You cannot. Um, so the monitor also is a recorder. Every time he says action, I would have to press record and, and, and cut, I will cut it. And so it has a recording digital version of what just got shot. And he will be looking playback at that and decide whether things needs to get changed. So one of my duty was basically stuck in front of the monitor and watching and recording and making everything. So the person I was most familiar with was actually the sound recorder, the lead sound recorder, because he was sitting next door with his headphone. And when, when it starts to record, he would have to listen to and t tell the d director if that take is good or if there's any noise in it and needs to be redone. So I was looking at, <laughs> I was staring at the sound recorder all the time. The guy, he was sitting there, I was sitting next to him and we're just <coughs> recording, cut, record, cut. And doing that over like, like the whole thing. So I, I pretty much watched the entire film's all takes from beginning to end. And I was doing that as one of my major duties, apart from other things. <laughs> Very boring. Hey, that's how you work on set. It's like the job is kind of like weird. <laughs> and, and it's something that's very small, but then you really need a person because the director needs to watch the performance. He doesn't want to have any distractions. He doesn't do the recording himself. And back then there, there, there's film, right? There's no digital. So you have to do that. And then you have to have one person who would just do nothing else but recording. Press record, press stop, press record, press stop. Do playback, you know? <laughs> and remember how many takes it's done. Like, like I'm not continuity. So continuity takes care of like looking at what, what, what gets filmed and stuff. But, but I, have to, I have to record it. What a boring job. I'm a human menu, menu tape recorder. Yeah, things changed a lot. These days it's digital, so you don't need that anymore. <laughs> and it's cool, but it's really cool when you film things on film stock, it's different. It's very, very different from filming digital. You have less freedom to, and you have to get rehearsed and you have to reduce the wasted footage. So you try to make use of it's money. Every inch is money. And so it's a totally different way of filming things. It's single camera, multiple takes, don't have multiple. I think that job, that film was completely filmed on one camera. And then what else? And, and that, that film cinematographer was really good. It was one of the better ones who's got a lot of awards and he does film exclusively. And he also has a really good focus puller. Yeah, focus pull, right? That's one of the harder jobs. Who can eyeball, who can eyeball the distance between the camera and the person who needs to be in focus. And they hardly use tapes in this film. They almost didn't. I, I don't know. I don't remember a lot of tape using, but, but, but it's like eyeballing and pulling focus and olden days of filmmaking. What else? Uh, Chinese drama series. Uh, Rise of the Phoenix. <clears throat> Rise of the Phoenix. Oh, Rise of the Phoenix. There are a couple of dramas similar to them. Big Saga. Big Saga historical. Mm. Any good ones? I mean, Rise of the Phoenix is pretty good. Um, oh, there's a similar one to it. The other day, I just, I just, oh, the other day, I just saw somebody making a video on that. 
I think there's another couple of ah, I can't think of it. <laughs> you know, oh, what is it? Anyone who can help this person out? <laughs> Patricia, Rise of the Phoenix, similar ones. Okay, wow, it's it's already that. Shall we try three hours? Because I mean, we're already here. I know not, not that many people are watching anymore. Go to sleep, okay? Wherever you are. I'm just gonna just randomly chat to 1230 and that will make it three hours and make it very difficult for YouTube to process it in the back. Can, but I don't care. <laughs> so I'm gonna ramble until 1230. And, and if you need to go to sleep, please don't stay here and watching me talk. What is your name in the crew list for? What do you mean? For? Trailer of Blue Whisper I did. Mm. It, it's the co <laughs> it's the dubber's voice. All right? And, and it's the common dubbers for these two. It's it's their it's their old dubbers who dubbed them. And and to me, when you dub that much, you, you like a part of your acting belongs to the dubber, not your, not you. <laughs> so I, I, I saw that I heard the emotional voices of the dubbers, but I have to, I have to see the drama before I can make it. I don't know. Like, I, I, like I said, I, I've grown out of fantasy, Xianxia fantasy genre overall, like it cannot interest me anymore. If you don't give me Oscar winning level performance out of this type of genre, I probably wouldn't catch my attention anymore. I, I'm just like really, really, probably is because I'm, I definitely got older. Yeah. And, and it kind of like just, just no longer interests me, but it's per, it's very personal. Um, the genre in general is, is something that I wouldn't be looking forward to. No matter who is acting it really, like who is the lead? I'm like, yeah, it's another fantasy. Like crazy, crazy magic power people fighting and the different tribes and you know, like uh, whatever it's ocean people, dragon people, flying people, people with night tails. I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> it's no longer my, my type of thing, but I'll, I'll, I'll definitely watch it and see if it, it's good. Yeah, uh, 11 to 1 is liver time, <laughs> I think. It's liver time, but hey, don't quote me on that Chinese medicine. So if you need to sleep, come on, go, okay? I, I'm be, gonna be here for another 12 minutes just talking about nonsense. Not worth, not worth sacrificing your sleep. Goodbye, go to sleep. Did you watch Oath of Love? No, I know it only aired today. I don't have time, did you? <laughs> like I woke up and, and, and I sat down here. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. <laughs> Still internal organs. Yes, yes, liver is important too. Yeah, Ren Jialun is stopped in this drama. I mean, in trailer it is. I, I don't see why they wouldn't use his own voice if the drama is actually his own voice and they, the tra trailer is stopped. Ren Jialun's line delivery is... <laughs> I don't want to say laughing stock about these days. Whenever people say about bad line delivery, he gets picked out as the. <laughs> his singing voice is pretty good, but his talking delivery has problems. He hasn't really professed it and trained it. And he has a lot of talking habits that's really bad for line delivery. I don't know. Depends on if he ever wants to improve on that. If he doesn't, who, you know, can't help it. <sighs> yeah. You know, Zhou Shen and Mao Buyi and Sa Ding Ding, three of them. It, it, it's like ashes of love. <laughs> Uh, and and when you when you hear when you hear that kind of like singing ensemble of, of a drama, it gives you an idea about what type of drama it is. Yeah. Ren Jia Lun, he like some dramas. 
it works well. Some dramas doesn't work. Um, he's definitely not an all around like very at ease with acting and can do any character's actor. He needs a very specific set of things ready for him to 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 work well. <clears throat> yeah, all the powerhouse, but but usually like with the drama with that many this type of singers. In the last couple of years, think about all the dramas that have this kind of singing. Ha hasn't been very successful. <laughs> so I, I hope this drama at least is luckier uh, compared to the other ones. And and also because like recently, right? Uh, the recent couple of years, it really is the case where You know? <laughs> It's a good song comes from bad dramas. So I, I don't know. I don't want to jinx this one. But you know, like for like it, if it's good, it's good. I, I would love to have better dramas than bad dramas, whether it's a genre I like or not. Even if it's like a fantasy that I don't care much about, but if it's good, you know, good. <laughs> it's much better than bad, right? But but that that type of like like superpowered people fighting superpowered people, I think overall the entire world is getting a little bit tired of that thing. Whether it's the Chinese fantasy or the superhero movies out out like in in the West. <clears throat> Reset OST, yeah, it's pretty nice. It's unusual for Chinese drama. Xianxia, Xianxia, yeah, Xianxia just, it's not like you can do a good Xianxia, but you have to be, these days you have to have ambition and you have to be a good writer and you have to almost like have the spirit of over turn the traditions. Because traditions are too stale for this genre, let's be honest. From the looks, the styles, the type of stories, the always repeated sort of star-crossed lovers and what, like I fall in love and the whole world crumbles and every other people die in this world. Like that's so old and boring and and, and la laughable, really. Always, always is like if you're a god and you, like you have the responsibility of heavens like earth on you and you like uh, the only thing you do is fuck, fuck up your personal relationship and romantic relationship, therefore killing everybody in the process. How good is that? You know, this type of story is just like too regurgitated and so boring. So if you want to do a really cool fantasy drama, you know, like I have no problem, but come on writers, use your imagination. Let's just do an unconventional one that's totally just chucking all that out of the door and let's just do something different, totally. If anyone dared to do that, I, I'm like, yeah, 100%, you know, feet and hands up for your success. It, it's so old now. Every, every story is three, ten, a million lifetimes. Holy shit. It's so boring. Ah. <laughs> uh. I still can't convince. Zhou Shen's voice. Yeah, Zhou Shen's voice, if you don't know, usually you think it's a woman, but once you know, you can tell it's a guy. It, it's very it's very interesting. You just have to be told, no, it's a guy, and then you can kind of tell. But before that, you kind of like don't expect it. Ah. <sighs> And um, for my for my own, my own little adventure of making those things that I've talked about in my previous life, I'm close to start doing it. I, I just got a shipped in materials for a couple of things I needed. And let's hope, let's hope I can, I can make it happen soon. Although it's very taxing. It's really taxing on your hands. And because I ran out of certain things, I couldn't make them for 
ten days now. My hands got rested and now it feels good. Previously, it hurts every day. Every day when I wake up, I know my knuckles are not working properly. Like they, they, they there's inflammation. You can feel it. Now it's getting like now it's back to normal. I don't know how. How can you make your hands stronger? Hey, is there a way to make it stronger? I don't know. How to train your muscles to be able to do those fine things but stronger? Zhou Shen is on you is a very unusual singer, unique one. There aren't that many guys like him in this world. Treasure. And also his song is very hard for women to sing because his low range is very low and then his high range is female, which is just, <laughs> I tried to sing a couple of his songs and it was like, I had to actually raise, raise the, 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 the pitch of it, um, the key of it, because if I sing the normal key, the high ones, I'm fine. The low ones, I cannot lower myself to his low point. Like, ah, oh, I'd be singing there. I can't do it. No matter how hard I try, I, I don't have that register. But but his register is like low is really low, high is really high. I'm like, oh, come on, it's so unfair. So I have to I have to add a few to to be able to sing the low low um, words. But then when it gets too high, it's way too high. It's not like you can't sing, but it sounds bad. It sounds like, um, you know, like water being boiled, boiling water out of a kettle kind of sound. It has no texture anymore. It's too high. So anyone who tries to sing Jojen's songs suffer the same thing. And I'm like, I'm just so boring. It's so like, I am. His songs, some of good songs that just makes it really, really agitating for, for other people. I'm like, I want to sing it, but I can't do it. <laughs> the low is too low, the high is too high. I'm thinking, wow. It, it, so, so, so like sometimes I like his songs, but then I hate his songs. Cause his songs are so beautiful and you want to sing that. But then <laughs> when you try, it's like, uh, nope, can't do that. <laughs> Uh, one minute from 12.30. So I should, I should be going, you should be going to sleep. For most of the people who are not on this side of the planet, go back to, go to sleep. Okay. And I'm making edits and I have two edits planned for, for under the skin that I haven't put out yet. So I have a lot of work to do. I hope I can get them out this week. I hope I don't overwork myself either, but one of them is almost ready and I really like it. I think it's going to be great. At least when I watch it, I'm really, really happy. I can rewatch it a hundred times. I don't know for other people, but my edits are like my babies. They're all adorable. And, and only I would ever know all the details I put in them that other people would never see and never know what I did, <laughs> which is one of the cool thing about editing, but also a sad thing about editing is I put a lot of things in it and a lot of work, but it's not visible. If you haven't seen the original footage, you don't know what I've done to it to manipulate it. So you wouldn't know only I know, but I was like, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, that should be the end of this stream. Yeah, everyone go to sleep. <laughs> okay, if you need to sleep, go to sleep. Take care. See you soon. And I hope tomorrow's ending of the drama is a good one. Fingers crossed. Okay. <laughs>